Good morning. Welcome into Herd Out Sports Radio here on AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube and live from the Pillar Exterior Stage. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lulo. What's going on? Hi. How you doing? I feel grossly underdressed. Well, I feel grossly overdressed. So I, I we're mean, in the same Mar- Mardi Gras slash funeral versus coach. Well, uh, we're both wearing black, though, so that's close. Yeah. We're in yeah. the same neighborhood here. Morbid. Well, <laughs> got to do what you got to do. A lot of people wish death the West Side. It's fine. <laughs> it's true. It's like, what's that 50 Cent song? Many hey, men. <laughs> hey, so how about my man, Terrence Bud Crawford, just Slaying and parlaying with M, Dre, and my man Curtis Jackson, a.k.a. 57. Well, you know, he's got a, uh, they're probably. Stumbled into a relationship with M. With Eminem. And, and now he's and got now the whole just crew. Like, now he's got all of them. Yeah, they're just boys. I mean, you know, he, he needs a new, well, he needs the whole crew to to walk into his next fight that he's it, apparently got coming up. Yeah, not one in which I, he wants, but it's part of the fight game. So, got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. He's only got probably two megas left in him, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get past this one. Keep one fresh. C- can you imagine, like, just being able to 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 jet to jet set? And, I mean, it's kind of like to steal some lines from Ric Flair, man. It's like limousine riding, <laughs> jet <laughs> flying. And speaking of which. Yeah. And and my buddy says this, but it's it's weird for me to get my arms around it because I just know I'm as kind of a regular person. But yeah. actually, I have two friends. Bud? I have three friends. No, yeah. with planes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's just a casual. I've got three friends. Well, with it's planes. way above my. Listen, I <laughs> I just I wave from afar. Hey, but, but one hi, is friend. One is actually well, two. Actually, Adam and and DJ are fairly close, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Close, close. And. He, so DJ always says, I don't like, know, DJ was rolling like that. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have said that out loud. But anyway, DJ, give me a call, bud. <laughs> he, he calls it. Um, he said, you know, it's not it's not economically efficient. It's not. Yeah. Whatever. Right. It's he said it's basically a time. It's machine. time. Yeah. You, you, it's it's 100%. it's it's a time machine. And I was talking to him last night late uh over text and all i could think of was can you at first when i saw the pictures of dannon mm-hmm. and i knew everybody was cramming a microphone in his face and uh, those are the times that i feel bad but i love it for my our buddies in the media that like are getting like they get to do their job right yeah, like that's what the, they the do content yeah and i was like man that would suck to be dan and i was like no wait a minute that's part of the job man no he can get Wherever he wants to, yeah, when he wants to, that would be a beautiful thing. Oh yeah, I, if if you're gonna if you're gonna fly me to Memphis f- from Lincoln, absolutely, let's go. Get me dressed, get my clothes, fly me back. Let's do it. Oh man, I'm your. Is it is it Huckleberry? Yeah, I don't want to get it right. I don't know what you guys say, Shane. Is I'll, that I'll be your Huckleberry. I don't mean you guys. I meant like you guys produ- produced guys that are in the know of Tombstone. Don't 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 do that to me. I, I didn't. <laughs> Did I, didn't I say it. it again already? The first no, because you weren't talking about like a group of people. <laughs> you were talking about like a profession, which is different. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. not a protected group. Air down. You know. <laughs> Thank you. They're not a. Uh, Ooh, it's getting a little. <laughs> it's getting a little dicey. Yeah, I, it's too early for that. It is. But yeah, it's like I, I would do that. Yeah, I mean, so there's this because he's in about three days. He's going to be overwhelmed. And oh he's, yeah, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna to, have to go to his little makeshift condo. He's gonna need to take a minute and 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 turn out the lights and and exhale. But right now, buckle up, Buttercup. I mean, when I when I need to relax, sometimes I just inhale. You just just big deep breath, you know. By, by the way, I can't that's, find my afrin. You got it, man. That's the that's the business. I only got it because of you, and it's extortion, by the way. Oh yeah, it's stupid expensive, but dude. But makes, it works make, like in thirty seconds. Makes makes. <laughs> <laughs> makes Flonays look like super hood. I and I thought I was getting cracked with Flonays. That stuff works in, almost instantly. But I can't find it. I think it's black magic. I don't even know what it is. Oh, it's got to be black. It's ridiculous. It's bad thing to do with yogurt. <laughs> um, no, because we're both wearing black today. That's there, all. there it is. But that's I can't, I can't find it. Uh, well, it's gonna cost you like another eighteen bucks to get a new one. Fuck. I'm like, <laughs> for this little lady bitty thing, how you gotta many get steps it, Am I gonna get, get it out at of Costco? This? You get a. Oh, the double pack? Yeah, there's a deal. Yeah, I get my vitamins there. Actually, I think it's a triple pack at Costco. It's yeah. a it's a good deal. Yeah, I got smacked at Costco the other day. 
Yeah. I don't even think I got anything that I could eat that wasn't a vitamin. And it was like a smooth 112. Oh, 112 is about the cheapest I've ever gotten out. Here's the thing. I didn't, get, I didn't get any food. That's a tough look. Yeah. I, zero food. If I get under out of Costco for under 200 bucks, I'm thrilled. Like, and they have my they have my favorite. I know how sometimes people hate on self checkout. Uh, you know, I, I like it's my, okay. My mom is like animate about not doing self checkout, which is which is cool, right? It's it's like Bobby Brown; it's her prerogative. But um, <laughs> I, they have the nicest, the nicest self checkout. Well, and they kind of help you out too. Some they don't always help you out. I was gonna do a pull a kid move and say, "Bruh, bruh I'm gonna stop." Bruh. I hate that, so I gotta stop. I it, usually only say it when I'm making fun bro, of somebody. Like everybody, like I texted oh, you, everybody always says it. I texted you, "Bruh," last <laughs> night because I was trying to do like over text the dumb guy voice I was doing on the yeah, air yesterday. Try, try coaching, <laughs> or go in the weight room or bruh. something. It's like, bruh. who's who's bruh, bruh? But anyway, um, bro, McNeese State was with him for like twelve minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I did laugh on the couch. Um, because I could hear you saying it, like just the start, just <laughs> yeah, just in typical Robbie fashion. But some of the self checkout people do help you, like they pay attention to the big scanning items. Yeah, some just kind of just chill. Well, it's like what we say: not everybody's good at their job, right? Listen, my girl Lucy, she got you covered, man. She did best in the business, and I get hugs. Oh, they dap you up and go a little. No, I'm talking like oh, hug. like full on. Yeah, she's uh, um a little mature. Okay, um, but. I mean, cooler than a fan, right? Just like, and she's so pleasant. And she's like, well, I just saw you in here the other day. Damon, what's what's going on? I need my vitamins. Well, and I get just like, you know, because I'm not trying to shoot my shot all in one grocery trip, which is pretty dumb when you go to Costco because that defeats the whole point. Yeah. But, I, I, but I, needed, I needed some specific cheeses, and then I can't. I just needed a couple of other things. So that day was only like $80, but the other day was like $112, and I looked at her and I was like, yeah, I know I'm seeing you again in like four days. I'm doing it all wrong, especially for how Costco's built. But that's coming. Like, that'll be at the end of the month where I'll make the the big trip, the nasty plunge. Yeah, I uh, I try and get it all done in one shot just because I, I don't like going so, there all so, the time. So Costco is Team Afrin. They've got, yeah, they have the triple packs. Yeah, they've got some, they've got some muscle milks and pure proteins now. I used to get a, my, a little cheap. I used to get my protein there all the time. Yeah. Back when I was a meathead. I used to all the time. Because it was, it's way cheaper than anywhere else. Yeah, it's crazy. So I need a, I need a, like a time machine too, where I could just get just, in, get out. Because yeah. I'm, I, listen, your boy's in a huge dilemma. I don't, I don't think a private jet's gonna help at Costco. I know. Could I use it in the city? Because I have like, uh-huh. well, I have twelve months left on my lease, mm-hmm. and I'm, I only have a thousand miles. Go turn it in now. I don't know if they'll do it with with twelve months. They will, as long as you're under your mile still. They will do it. Yeah, I don't know. We could talk off air. I, I, I you gotta go. I got. Well, I got the lease game figured out. We're all good. So, so yeah. If I'm Danon, I'm thinking. All right. Yeah. I gotta. I gotta ride this wave. Yeah. And, and well, and you see, Trev's not going. Oh yeah. I mean, I, so y- you did it. I'm glad I did it, but also that's a coward move. But I'm just telling though, people. So go back and you know, I'm always here for the comments. Yeah. He was getting crushed. Yeah, I know. I was the one crushing him. And I couldn't believe it. Like <laughs> nothing would do. I just Please was scrolling through the comments. I'm like, you guys, like I couldn't even vibe with it. And I know I can be a gump sometimes. Like, oh, come on, man. Like, like be, what mom always said. Yeah, like, be, not, be nice. <laughs> but you guys were like all in. Oh, yeah. There was vitriol go, there. I mean, go away. Do You know. I didn't AD your own school. No, well, yeah, like, there was a lot of that. But I'm like, fellas, no, leave, ladies, leave, no, leave it alone though. Like he actually, he he does, he does. You ever you haven't left anybody you love before? Yeah, but then you don't get to keep texting them. <laughs> like when you leave, you give up I, some I, privileges. So I'm just and like I don't, you don't get to break up with somebody and be like, hey, and, like you want to go out this Friday? Like that's not and how I, it and works. I, and I know you're gonna want to fight over this, but you can't in a suit. So I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I'd love to see you try to punch in that thing, but you'd be like, eh, eh, eh. Oh, I'll get it done. I don't care. <laughs> Look like a ninja turtle. My mom like Try to tailor these things. I'm good to go. Um, I don't think he wants to be a distraction. I like turtles. No, that's fine. And 
that's fine. So I, it's like, oh, DB, there you go. Now you know you want to defend them. No, I'm just saying, like, oh, I, I think it's a distraction for A and M too. Yeah, like it, if I wasn't doing it as he's being altruistic for Nebraska. Why do you have to use such big words so early? It's usually me. Well, listen, when I'm dressed nice, I feel like I have to talk better. Oh, okay. <laughs> me no, has to talk real good. No slumming it for you? Yeah, no. It, I don't think he's doing it that out a, of... That was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> really? I actually didn't see him eating the yogurt in that movie, though, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's authentic. I really got to be careful on what I say about that. So um, my love's in jeopardy. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's called Slumdog Millionaire. Shane, oh, that's what the joke man. was. Um, that's no big deal. I mean, you know what they say: us Indian folk are good at uh, trivia. Oh, um, let's, let's not act like you hit me with the cruise and roots thing last week or a couple weeks ago. When did I do that? <laughs> oh, I just said it in passing. I don't, I don't, Nobody can do that. I don't even recognize what we're doing here. <laughs> Told you I, I don't even recognize. I don't do big boats anymore. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, that was you. No, you started. That. Oh yeah, of course you did. But I th- take some responsibility. <laughs> Culpability? What's that? Unlike, so do un- I have to? I have to own it. Unlike Trev over here, I need you to own what he did. So kind of like um, Dana, Coach Altman's brilliant response last night to yeah. the media. Yeah, like diffuse it. It's not about them. It's not about Mac. It's not about Dana. You know it's what not Dana about Trev. didn't do? Oh, if no, no, you, oh, listen, oh. that's my guy. So if you if you put him up now. If Who, Dana's your guy? Yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm defending Dana. Here. Oh, okay, because I'm, I'm. You know what Dana player. didn't do when he left Creighton for Oregon? What? He didn't ga- go, hey, great hire, Creighton. Congrats, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> he might have texted him privately. That's is, fine. It was private. This is the correct way to handle your business. Right. Right. So we got we especially got, when you don't have a Twitter presence really to speak of, and then all of a sudden you're like, gig him. Come on, Johnny Manziel. Let's be buddies. Bring on the bus. Bring the bus down. Yeah. So I congrats, Troy. I think was was Twitter a thing though? Back in two thousand eight or whenever we left or two thousand ten when we left, yes. Barely. Yeah, barely. It was invented in two thousand six. Get off my lawn. <laughs> wow. Oh, Walt Kowalski. Whatever the hell oh. is. <laughs> no, there's no way Ravi Kowalski would have lived in Walt's neighborhood, though. No. <laughs> it's bad enough when the other family moved in. Get off my lawn. <laughs> um, what, you don't like Torino's or what? Oh, yeah. Would you will that to me if you if you pass? I probably wouldn't drive it, though. I don't have a Torino. What are you talking about? Oh, will you the lease on my Jeep if you want? Sounds like you got a problem there. Why would I want your lease? I don't want another bill. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just a bill. If you yes, like boats, I'd leave you the boat. But I don't like boats either. It's just like a lake. No, boats are fine. It's like a lake boat, though. It's not like a big boat. Yeah. I'll take it. You can only fit like five or six people on there, so it's probably see less see, problematic. I see what you're doing. I think it's the large groups that you worry about. <laughs> and also, you'd have a hard time crossing anything more than Lake Manawa with that thing. <laughs> um, oh, man. Although it is a 26-footer, it's pretty good size. Um, there was basketball games on last night. <laughs> I don't know if you watched any of those. Um, got a little late in the night, didn't it? It did, man. I'm tired. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. So that, my that Kansas game didn't end up till like midnight, twelve ten. And I'm so happy. I'm cheering my brains out for Kansas. Why? Because being Matt Demer. Oh, that's right. Thing. Go. You know that Sanford got hosed on that call, though. But still, though, I mean, no, that's a bad call. Can, like, just can, acknowledge it's a bad call, please. Yeah, like it's a terrible call. I love how you like you want to box me in. No, oh, listen, I just I, it I was. was it was a bad call. Okay, now we can talk about whatever else you want. That, I, I that, love that's the fa- I love the fact that Kansas scored ninety some odd points. That's great, rock chalk baby. They did it against Samford. Okay, now listen, all you upset minded losers out here that were trying to poke holes and now I did miss on Duquesne, but you, for the most part, I'm you, trending in the right direction. Yeah, you were you were dead on on McNeese. <laughs> I told you they're not good. <laughs> it's not. It's not a good basketball. Well, team. here's my problem with McNeese. Right, you're going to find that out today with James Madison too. James Madison is actually a good basketball team, but they're going to run into a buzzsaw today. Here's my problem with McNeese State. Right, is that Will Wade wasn't that good at actually coaching basketball? I, at LSU. I said that he was really good at recruiting. I said, great recruiter, dude. Like, I mean, and you guys jumped all over me. I I didn't. The, 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 the white, brown, and blue review jumped all over I me yesterday. I did not. I actually don't work for that publication. <laughs> I um, swipe through in the brown. And I'm pretty sure not a single brown person does. <laughs> um, 
If I had to check, I don't know. I don't think Joel Lorenzi's moonlighting for him or anything. Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe Niata was a contributor. I'm not, though. I've, I'm busy enough. I got stuff to do. Oh. Um, no, I, that was Dean Marinas. I wasn't defending Will Wade. I was saying Gonzaga's a week five. Which I, is but, why and, people, and I told they're playing well. They're playing a lot better. They are. I, you got that's why I say you got to watch. I understand that. They, they like offensively, they're in a rhythm. That's fine, but I think that's why people were drawn to that matchup. Yeah, was McNeese has some athleticism. I'm glad you didn't throw the state on there. I saw they finally got rid of it on the graphic. Gonzaga was viewed as a week five. I thought they were overseeded a little bit. No, one hundred for their I'm, resume. One hundred percent. Even though they were playing well for their I'm, resume. I, no, I'm were, with you. Yeah, I'm were, with you. They're probably closer to a six or a seven. Ravi. Yeah. You don't have to quantify it. I agree with you. Well, I'm just I'm not I'm just you know I'm doing a radio show, so we gotta <laughs> give context to things every once in a while. Um, what? <laughs> How are we gonna? Looks like we made it. Who knows? When it's, we get to the year, Marcus. We gonna what are we gonna have? Like oh, we're gonna have a party, cake, cake and cookies. I mean, as soon as we make it past five weeks, I'm throwing a party. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> hey, you want to celebrate Easter together? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so like I think I think, but my problem with McNeese was Will Wade was bad at LSU. Like my biggest issue with some of his teams are like, okay, you got the number one pick in the draft. You got another guy that was going to go in the in the lottery or first round, whatever the other dude went that didn't end up being good at basketball. I guess Ben Simmons didn't end up being good at basketball either. Well, he's pretty good at basketball. No, he didn't like basketball. Say, he's pretty good at basketball. He, he just, just doesn't care. He just doesn't like he it. He just has no interest in playing basketball. Got a little, you know, he got a little Deshaun Watson in him. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm going to have to get used to this over the next couple of years because you're you got one of those vaulty kind of memories. Yeah. And you love to exaggerate like. Well, I, it's not like I'm running this dude's fan club or anything. Well, I just said D Watt is better than you're giving him credit for. DB here. I'm not riding with this dude anywhere. DB here, ride or die for Deshaun Watson. That's all I heard. That's um, a lie. <laughs> but no, I mean, like Will Wade was was bad at LSU. Yeah, really good recruiter. Really bad basketball. So coach. how come I didn't hear the I didn't hear that clap back yesterday? You guys were ride or die with these 12, 5, 13, fours kind of things. My clap back was people are making the mistake of choosing McNeese because they think Gonzaga is overseeded, which is correct, but they're not actually looking at McNeese. Man, you'll do anything to land that plane, won't you? Yep. You will zigzag the heck out of that thing. Waste well, waste all kind of fuel. Yeah, I will. Listen, you gotta make you, you and Troy Dan, and where are you gonna take him next? Wherever he needs to go. Well, he's probably gotta go get some more clothes. Yeah, well, listen. He's got some. He's got probably eight Nebraska pullovers, and that's it. Hey, did you see the introduction that uh, Dennis gave him yesterday? Mm -mm. Yeah, Dennis introduced to the new athletic director, and it was so cool. I was like, "Oh, I feel like I'm having a moment." You got you getting your feels a little bit. No, because I'm not nostalgic. I do like the fact, though. I like when, um, like, I'm a big. I, I like when people get along. So, mm. like, those moments where I, I see some adults in the room and, and young people are gravitating towards them. Like, I like those moments. You know yeah. what I mean? And that was kind of what it was like. You know, you had everybody was kind of in their warm-up. And, you know, Dennis got to look athletic because he arguably has the best tie collection of maybe anybody in the, in the state of Nebraska. I um, mean, I would have a conversation about that, but. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he'd give Lindley's a, a run for their money. Lindley's is off the ch off the chain. Yeah, no, Dennis has got some ties. Right. But anyway, that's fine. It was just good to see some comp, and they're going to hit the ground running. See, there's no time for. I said this yesterday on Benning Bites. Like sometimes idle time can be the devil's playground, right? Mm -hmm. That's where we got the saying. And usually, with a a sitting AD that comes to take a job as somebody else's current AD. When a lot of the things are in place that they're at in Nebraska, sometimes you can think your way into a, okay, what's next? What's next? Mm -hmm. How can I put my fingerprints on this thing? How can I put my fingerprints on this thing? Like, Or is there this period in time where you're like, you know what? I don't really need to do anything. I'm going to, let me admire. Yeah. I, I, I kind of like your, your living arrangement here. I mean, let me give it some time, get comfortable and see what I would tinker with. But for right now, I feel like I'm okay. So where will... Um, that athletic department, Dan and, and, and Nebraska's coaches be in on that, right? Yeah. I mean, 
you, you got to go hit Coach Cook up. Mm-hmm. You know, you, if I were him, you know what I would do? What's that? Now, this is just me. Yeah. Because I have a weird affinity. Do you know where I would ask the plane to take me to next? Where? Kansas City. Why is that? Wrestling. Mm, yeah. I, I'm going to go say what's up to Coach Manning, Coach Schneider, all those guys. It is an amazing event. My man Mike Jernigan is there now, sending me all sorts of pictures. Um, well, and one of the would you would you, wouldn't you hit up KC? That makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't that be cool? It's in an, Manning's a heck and hey, Coach Rule loves him so much. Well, and it's a it shows that you're that you a care about all your athletic programs because it's really hard to go to Memphis to see men's basketball, and then I don't know if he's going to try and make his way out to Corvallis if the women win or whatever, but. Um, then to not go, it would have been nice if he could have went there first, right? You could have yeah, just, just like could have <laughs> taken a little walk. <laughs> just be like, hey, before I because sometimes going to Corvallis, you feel like you got to go to Seattle, which is a whole state over, yeah, but it does yeah, feel like that. It's like a, a whole thing, right? Yeah. Unless you're going to Seattle or Portland in the Pacific Northwest, mm-hmm. it is horrible to get to anywhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, so it's it would be nice to be able to kind of stick your hand out and say, hey we're we're here for you too whether it's not just football it's not just men's basketball obviously volleyball in the state of nebraska but to be able to go to um mark manning and apparently say, baseball is pretty good too so maybe you can hit the yeah they'll be around the quintuple effect they'll be they'll be around though i wish in my random opening 22 minute spiel do you know what i wish this has got any nothing to do with anything except you actually said baseball Actually, you said baseball, but that's why. I'm sorry. What? You brought it up. It's okay. It's cool. Go ahead. I wish high schools would stream more, like, in yeah. football and basketball. Yeah. I really do. Because I love baseball. I know. you People, I think, don't realize how big of a baseball fan you are. Yeah. I, and uh, I got Micah kind of into it now. He at least pays attention. And yeah. He, you know, he doesn't quite get, like, traditional powers and stuff. He's like, Dad, do you see that Millard South beat North? You know, whatever I'm mm-hmm. not gonna whatever the score was, right? It wasn't good. And I yeah. go, yeah. I said that's a that's a traditional state power against a program that's been building for a while. I said those kind of things can happen in baseball, and he goes, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm like, glad you didn't play <laughs> baseball. <laughs> first, first and only time I'll ever say that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, but let's see if we can't stream more high school baseball games. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's DB's call to action. We will. I'm not. Was who am I, Damon Pillen? Yeah, we will. Governor, Regent, Damon Pillen. <laughs> We're back here on Herd Sports Radio AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're live from the Pillar Exterior Stage. It's you know, cool, that's diff- a, cool, a cool name. The difference between Dana and Trev is that he's waited 16 years to talk <laughs> about what happened at Creighton. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a difference. Also, I think if nothing else, Nebraska fans should be able to ride with you that you are on their defense. 100%. I am absolutely on their defense because, like, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It is it is a bad way to handle your business. Every, Go take another job. Do whatever you want. The, the last eight days, I have let you just get away with just dogging my friend. Well, listen, your friend did some dumb bleep. I don't know what to tell you. Like... I, and I don't think you disagree with me. You're going to be nicer to him because you like him. Well, I, mean, I don't think you disagree. Because your friends don't always do things that you yeah, sometimes that you like. Sometimes your friends are dumb as hell. I didn't say that. That's I did. Well, the vantage point, though, it, it's different. So, like, if we're talking about aptitude and decisions made, like, we don't have enough information to say that. No, we don't. I'm going to anyway. I mean, that. so that's the difference, <laughs> right? Like... I mean, the more information. Here's the problem, okay? Because I was on Trev's side on day one. Day one, I was on his side. I was like, the Board of Regents bleeped this up. No, I think it's because you felt like my feelings were hurt. No, I, it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the, <laughs> I don't care about that. Forget my feelings. <laughs> Do you know Verzal has a t shirt that says that? That doesn't surprise me at all. It says, F your feelings. Yeah, that is the <laughs> least surprising thing I've ever heard about Matt Verzal. Also, if you gave me, if you just said, hey, does anybody that we both know has the shirt that says F your feelings? Who would it be? Matt Verzal would be my number one guest. Yeah, yeah, well, that um, makes good sense. No, it's 
you you're allowed to uh, no day one though. I was on Trev Sykes. I thought the board regions bleeped up. I thought there's no way this guy leaves this place unless something horrible happened. That was my stance on day one. Day two, when he started speaking, I was like, oh, this guy might just be acting like a moron. <laughs> Not that he is a moron, just acting like a moron. There's a difference there. That's why I said it like that, because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. I phrased it differently for you. I can't stand you. <laughs> if, listen, if you took my temp right now, it's about 101.9. <laughs> and I'm totally chilly <laughs> because it's Friday. And we have, ba- we have basketball to go on. And I'm not totally wrong. That's but the other. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to stand for the blasphemy much longer. Uh, well, <laughs> we're going to find that line. And here's this, this is the beauty of my personality. Like, I'm a uh, let's figure it out guy. Yeah. So I, I don't need my pound of flesh. I can't go back and get it. How do we get better? And how do we get here? Right. The how do we get here is the first part. So. They got to figure that part out. And I think that's what they're doing. The more Dr. Gold talks, the more I'm all in. And if we're mature enough, and I say this fully with my tongue planted in my cheek, Mm -hmm. if we are mature enough. I'm almost certainly not. To take politics and political views out of it Mm -hmm. and look at Nebraska as an academic and athletic institution. That's a novel idea. Not much to thumb your nose at. No. In terms of an academic leader, I don't know that you could pick anyone better than Dr. Gold. No, he may be overqualified, to be honest. Probably. And. I mean, he was a heart surgeon for 25 years. He probably is overqualified. So, the, you know what I love, though? Yeah. He he told you right away what he didn't know. Athletics isn't his thing. Yeah. But he didn't pretend that it was. Mm-hmm. You try to hire smart people. And let people go to work. To help you fill in your, your blind spots. Man, I was like, okay. Yeah. You, 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 could, you could say just about anything else except don't talk bad about my mom. And I'm probably going to ride with you. Because, like, that's half of it, right? Yeah. Knowing what you don't know. 100%. Surrounding yourself with people that are smarter than you. All the things that I like. Yeah, hey, that's man, why hey, you wanted to do a radio show with me. I did, right. I'm, <laughs> right when I texted, I was like, Robbie, I have got to come back. Help me be great. Bobby, can you help me be great? You're like, man, DB, I got you. I man. got you. What'd you say? Say is it say no more or say no less? Say, say less. less. Say, say less. less. I definitely didn't say that because I have no idea how kids talk these days. Say less. Chili's Chili's tweeted back at us. Did you see that? No. So you hit me up on, on Twitter because Chili's they're running a ton of Chili's at. Dude, it yeah. was like between that and Nick Ba and his pink his salmon polo for Pella, I'm like. That's all you could see. I feel like these commercials are on loop. So we saw. He's like, hey, a, I want you to know what Pella did for my house. We did a <laughs> bunch of chilies. And we saw a bunch of chilies ads. So you hit me up on Twitter and you tag chilies in it. And then they and I go elite chips and salsa. They responded with all they said was Y A K and then a fire emoji. And I was like, some 20 year old is running this account. And I don't know what the F that means. Y A K. So I literally I quote tweeted and I go, oh, I go, young people of Twitter, Uh-oh. please let me know what this means. Apparently, it means you already know fire emoji. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. No, it was cool, but I was like, I don't, I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even recognize are you, what are, we're doing. Are you here. a little old and curmudgeon? Well, you're the one that wanted to live on Walt Kowalski's in his neighborhood. Uh, I mean, maybe not in that particular neighborhood. Could you? Could you? Stan, if he called you names, because he called his neighbor names, and, oh. and they ate it like champs. Oh, I could stand for it. I don't know if he'd be standing for it. <laughs> That's a different conversation. You think you could whoop Walt? I, any 80-year-old man you put in front of me, I will beat him up. Nobody can do I that. I don't know. Any 80-year-old man. Did you see how he punked the guys on the street to get the two kids to come home? Remember One when they three. were there messing with his cousin? Yeah. And he's like, hey. And he kind of just pulled his shirt up and showed him the I mean, listen, if he's willing to go to prison, that's fine. Yeah, some people are. Some people are. Some people don't mind it. And I, for the second day in law, I lost my train of thought. I'm, yeah, I'm me too. Getting, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm to get pissed here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. I didn't do it. Yes, you did. You're the one bringing up Grand Torino. <laughs> so, but like with the, so, so going back to, to Dana's comment and, comment and waiting 16 years. Yeah. It was just part of the question. 
Right. And he answered it beautifully and moved on. So he didn't unprompted stick his hand back into a cookie jar where it didn't belong? Because he knows it's about the young man. You would think Trev would know that as well. Stop it. That's you... why he's not going today. Right. Would he have gone would he have gone today if he didn't just get Bro, he's not torched? running he's not running his Twitter account. Well, somebody needs to get he needs to get a hold of whoever who is and have him find the Chili's guy, hire that person to run their Twitter account so he can just say yak fire emoji. So, I'm gonna get you one. I'm gonna see if Verzal can order me one of those t-shirts because you'd rock that too. <laughs> just not in front of my mom. I don't swear in front of my mom. Um let's get to the phone line. Jesse wants to talk about Trev. Jesse, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. I'm just I'm away Jesse? Yeah, what's up, fellas? How we doing? Crash. I'm good. All right. No, no, no. Don't don't be that guy, Jesse. Hang in there. Hang in there. It's a, it's a I, I am. I it's am. it's, it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. My national champion is still alive. Sure. But that's all that matters. Stop hey, it. What'd I tell you about that? You Dude, love George. hearing about brackets. Hey, how do I look? I've been going to the gym. <laughs> Go, no, go Jesse. I'm, right. I'm, I'm sitting next to a ding dong. Sorry, Jesse. Go ahead, bud. It's okay. No, I'm historically better on day two than day one anyway. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Go Today's history. Talking, go history. Oh, yeah. Hey, just talking about this Trev thing. I, I was trying to figure out how to approach this without hurting <laughs> my feelings. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a grown up. You're not going to hurt my feelings. What's up, bud? You can't hurt mine. I'm dead inside. <laughs> I just, I, I guess I need. I guess I'm not really speaking to you two. I'm speaking to Husker Nation as a whole. You got to understand how unique it is to care this much about an athletic director. Because I got to tell you, I'm a Notre Dame guy, and if Damon was like Jesse, I'll cut you a check for 500 grand right now if you could tell me the name of Notre Dame's athletic director. I would not have 500 thousand dollars. Is like, it Jack Swarbrick still? Yes. Yeah. I, is it? Is it Jack? Yeah, okay. Pay that yeah, man. And you're a sports guy, too. Pay that man. Yeah. He's money. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's what I'm trying to give you guys. It's, it's the fishbowl thing here. Like, here here in Omaha, Lincoln, you know, it makes sense. But outside of there, I don't know that it does. And it's weird. I think it's weird. that the I guess the situation merits the coverage. But overall, like... Who cares? Right, like, yeah, right. I, guess I, don't, I guess I don't care who the athletic director is. So, like, uh, yes and no. I'm with you. And you're always super practical, which is what one of the things that I think I, I like about you, Jesse. But remember, it's been so tumultuous and uniquely connected to athletics. I think we feel pot committed. Also, the way that he talked about this place before he left. Stop it. Made us feel like he was never leaving. Stop it. We've had some bad ones, though, Jesse. We're traumatized. Jesse, we appreciate the call. <laughs> I, I can't promise you we're not going to talk about it more. But I'm not. I mean, I probably will because I'm petty. Uh, and, and kind of a jerk. Cody, hang on the line. We'll get your call coming up next year as we wrap up hour number one on Herd Out Sports Radio. Wrapping up hour number one here on Herd Out Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula here on the Pillar Exterior stage. And before we get any further, I want to make sure we get to our guy, Cody, because I know DB wants to talk some wrestling. Cody wants to talk some wrestling. I love to talk wrestling. Commander Cody. Cody, what's up, bud? David, Robbie, what's up, gentlemen? Hi, buddy. How are you? Are you parenting uh, right now? Or are you on your way to work? Or my are blood you... is still boiling. Why? <clears throat> Van D. I know. 133 oh, pounds. That's good. That's a tough class, though, Cody. Tough class. Tough class. Yeah, I'm sure you saw me going off last night. But uh, so who are you? Ta- so who are you going with now, Kai? Oh no, I've I've had broken since the beginning. Okay, all right, dude. Well, well, yeah. but I just, Co- Cody here for he, favorites. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought you may I take like that. an underdog or something. Yeah. No, I. I was so upset for the Vandy match. But can't be too upset when you get seven guys in quarterfinals. Yeah, only seconded two. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Who has yeah. the most, Cody? I, who has the most? It's yeah. Penn State with eight. Yeah, I know. I know. But, but Nebraska second at Nebraska seven, which seven. is two more than the Cyclones. Which is wild that that only gets them six and points right now. I, well, this, I mean, it's complicated scoring that's part of it yeah but i mean 
I, I have a grinder this morning. We got some tough draws. So do you realize, Cody, because you're my buddy, I can share this with you and our four listeners yeah. and our 30,000 people that are on digital platforms. Um, I actually split screen and then put full screen with wrestling yesterday during college basketball. Ooh, is that okay hey, to say it loud? I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm, gr- <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I, I really I'm all grown up. Your friends aren't listening and aren't going to let this get through their head yeah but i uh you brought up your boy jernigan yeah and i'm in a group chat with him bob ranky reed weber and chuck so both mullig you're in a, you're in a group text with both mulligans oh yeah oh it's, boy uh, oh boy they were fired up last night obviously I'm, they're down there in kansas city so they're having a good time but I just said I just send I just send Jernigan silly TikToks, but I, I got to ask you something real quick, because uh, yeah. you and I were going through this real time. So it was basically you, me, and my buddy Degenerate Aaron. He's a huge wrestling nut, and we were going through the seedings real time. And I asked you about like Carr and O'Toole on the same side, and I get yeah. it. I get why Ramirez had it. Who do you think hey, Bennett Ramirez? About got taken out by our boy Nick Hamilton yesterday. Oh, I know, cause he, cause he gets. If that goes another fifteen seconds. Nick Hamilton's wrestling this morning. I, I think he Which was gassed. Nick is wrestling this morning because he came back to the backside. But... So who was the most underseated guy? Was it Starokey? Well, and I get why he was underseated. That's the low hanging fruit. Yeah, but he was nine. Yeah, well, Andonian was twelve. Yeah, good point. At 57. How about, Andonian's a dog, man. How about Caleb Smith, though? <laughs> I think I woke up the whole all of Miller yesterday when he won. Well, that well he that, that and, and, and and Trail getting like the the tech the the TF in his first ever like that's nationals. Yeah. It's wrestling. Like well, I'll then, I'll forever Antrell, be respectful. Of, like Antrell is he's got a chance to be a he's got a chance to be a dude. Yeah, and what's crazy is I'm sitting there texting the guys. They get to late second period last night. I'm like, dude, Antrell looks yeah, yeah. And then he just goes out and gets another takedown and goes back to leading by six or seven. And it's like, oh, maybe I was wrong. So you know, Lent, Lenty is uh, Lenty. I just combined Lenny Pinto and Linty. Yeah, Lenny uh, and Pinto. So Pinto is probably my favorite to watch. And it's no disrespect to Ridge because but everybody yeah, loves well, Ridge, right? Everybody loves Ridge. So I kind of picked an off the radar guy when he was young. Gur. So this goes yeah, all the well, way back to early screw Lenny last night. Oh, I know. I believe me. <laughs> you can talk about that. that call. So I try to get back. To, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a, a, an under the, the, the radar guy, but um I'm I'm cheering hard for Caleb because he's in a brutal weight class. Um, he had a double digit seed, unlike you know guys like Brock Hardy, who I thought were misseeded too. But do you think yeah, the, do, you, do you think the book was out on Hardy? Is that why he was a nine? Do you think? Because he didn't have the kind of I, year that you know the repeat performance. But I also chalk that up too. There's a million different ways you could have seeded 125, and no one would have argued. Oh yeah, yeah. So are you trying to are you trying to tell me to stop crying over Caleb Smith seeds? I'll, no, you, I. <laughs> Caleb was the underseeded, yeah, especially being a returning qualifier. But if we're going to do that, the one that one that really bugs me is Jared Sima is in the quarterfinals today. Well, he doesn't have a lot of help. I mean, you thought he had easy Bubba, street or yeah. what? No. Sima got the wild card over Bubba, even though Bubba beat him. Yeah. And Bubba had a better percentage. Bubba had a better strength of schedule. But Sima had other, you know, it was kind of a 50-50 split. You could have argued either one. And then here's this guy that barely got in. Now he's in quarterfinals. That's what happens. For you and I. Hey, let me let me get you out of here on this. Uh, I'll give you forty-one sixty-five. What else is really competitive? Forty-one sixty-five, twenty-five and fifty-seven. What? Uh, which weight class are you most looking forward to? I would say sixty-five. Yeah, just you want uh, you think seventy-four it, top side. 
Hey, Makai, Makai, the way Sirachi looked yesterday, I wouldn't count Makai out. Yeah, but you can't. So at 65, you still have O'Toole and Carr on the same side, though. That's not fun. No, it's not. Hey, O'Toole's got to get through intro. No, I get you. But <laughs> got got to shake the nerves. Is this the real? Yeah, is is, is this the is this the real Real Woods that we're seeing? I think so. God, and you got you talk about a three. I mean, a, a, Amity, Amity's going to push Carr too. Yeah, I don't know. I worry about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he's explosive. Going to be okay. explosive if that thing gets late in the third or something. I I don't know if he's explosive enough. Yeah, but he's got that length. You know, uh, to, to oh, keep okay. it to Brad, keep him at bay, I mean, <laughs> was he Darlando Hill or somebody? I get the length, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darlando was all right, wasn't he? No, he was he's really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, seven quarter final. You know the matchups. What do you say our record is this morning? Uh, I'll go three and four. That's where I went. 25, 49, 84. Yep, I'll go three and four. Yep. All right, I'll be texting you. All right, buddy. Talking wrestling. All right, buddy. Appreciate you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Grace, Robbie. Am I good? Can I tap back in now? Oh, God, that was so kind of you. You good? We good? You you still owe me lunch, but that was kind of you. I'm going to... I. I know sometimes for folks that don't cover wrestling, it's not scintillating, but thank you. No, I understand. I, I don't have anything against wrestling. It's I just so excited. don't know anything about it. I get it. Like I w- I've watched Nebraska several times this mm-hmm. year, and I'm happy when they win. You know, I got into it because of Nash, and I wanted to see how he was doing and how he looked at like 285, although he was probably walking around at like 300 and just you know cutting some weight, like whatever. Um, and so I, I like it. I enjoy watching it. I just don't. I'm not educated enough on it to have any sort of conversation about it can i ask you something real quick about nash is sure. that can i have permission yeah permission permission granted <laughs> thank you you're welcome if you're nash what do you play at i would love it if he played under mm, like between 305 and 315 really because he played what 335 last year that sounds heavy now 335 sounds too heavy and no, if you know i think 315 oh, kind of sounds heavy now 315 is on the very high end i would love him at like 305 can you imagine? But I'll give like, him some grace up to 315. If he was like at 300. I mean, we're, we're talking 300, 305. We're kind of splitting hairs there. No, actually bit. not, though. I guess the bigger you are, yeah. The less five, that five pounds matters. Yeah. Like that. So, I mean, you could call it 300, you call it 305. I don't want him much lighter than 300, I don't think, because he still needs to have some of that mass. But he will move infinitely better at 330, at 305 than he did or 300 than he did at 335 because but I look at some of these D lines, man, like, like Newton. And I mean, you look at the way Iowa plays on the D line, like they don't have, look at Michigan. They don't J- have a ton J- of huge goods. Jenkins. Isn't a big, those guys aren't big guys. No, but I think Nash is, a they're little, explosive guys, which I think Nash is going to look incredibly more explosive at 300. If he plays that low 300 or 305, if he plays that light next year. I mean, do you remember watching Benton last year from Wisconsin? Yeah. I'm like, whoa. I liked how Nash played last year. I thought his size prevented him from finishing plays at how, the rate I would have liked. How about his coaches being all in too? Like on the wrestling? Yeah. No, I love it. Night is like real time. I think he I think they understand that this is good for them. And and not just good for him. And T Night, he's a good dude. Coming up next, we're gonna talk to Parker Gabriel because we haven't set the lineup yet today. Uh he's from that weird? the Denver Post. We're gonna talk some Denver Broncos, I guess, for some reason. We could talk everything. Uh, we're gonna talk to Mike Sauter at nine, Jessica Cootie at nine thirty, Matt Verzal at nine forty five. First hour's not over. We got the lineup out. Still counts. Air dap. We've got more Hurt at Sports Radio coming up next. Kicking off hour number two here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. We're also live from the Pillar Exterior stage. DB is mad at me because I couldn't teach him how to do something on the internet that he also could not figure out. Well, you're supposed to be smarter than me. You're the IT guy. I'm not an IT guy. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can be good at IT. What do you mean? You why, be... why is everybody a racer, by the way? You can't just be like, ah, oh, my Indian counterpart here must know how to fix the internet. Do, do you not usually fix my computer problems? I do, but that's a coincidence. Oh. 
Why didn't I know that? I just happen to be good at IT. Um, <laughs> Do IT guys eat yogurt? Wow. Shame. Quit being so racist over there. What? I don't even know. Par- I don't even know. Par- I don't even know. Parker's going Parker's like, what am I getting? Into? Uh, it's, it's a good thing he knows me, though. He knows I get a little squirrely. Uh, Parker Gabriel from the Denver Post <laughs> joining us now. Parker, how are you this morning? I'm doing well. How you guys doing? Long time no talk. I see a lot to change. Yeah, right? <laughs> P- PG, at least I'm consistent. Hey, listen, this is like a coming home of sorts, right? Like, you started with me. Yeah, that's true. For yeah, I yeah, right out right out of the gate from uh, October, uh, October no August of 2017 yep. when uh, the Broncos or the let's see what was Nebraska up to in August of 2017. They're about to change athletic directors yep. and of football coaches, and yeah, there was a lot of turmoil. It sounds, I mean. I, 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 I looked. I looked to the guy that I was working with, and I'm like, "Have you been reading this Parker Gabriel stuff? He's really good. Do you think he can do radio?" <laughs> Boy, that, were you wrong. That's how it started, PG. That's how it started. That's true. Yep, it is, and it seems like yesterday in a lot of ways. Hey, so let me just backtrack just for a second because around here, as a Steelers fan. I am getting my timeline a couple of weeks ago, 10 days ago was miserable with everybody tweeting me Russell Wilson stuff. Right. But I'm not anti Russ. I'm I'm I was anti. I don't know if he could fit the city's type. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How how bad can a guy's type be to eat that payroll? Uh, Yeah, well. When you put it in, <laughs> uh, when you measure it in the head coach's type, uh, apparently bad enough because it was just, I think the thing with Russell Wilson here is, you know, obviously he played bad in 2022. There's no doubt about it. Everybody did. It was a mess. It didn't work with Nathaniel Hackett. And then I think it's hard to separate, and we don't really do that all that well, especially when it comes to sports and especially when it comes to the NFL. But I think it was sort of a separate issue this last year, and it really had more to do with how Russell Wilson plays compared to how Sean Payton wished he would play um, than it did, like, Russell can't play anymore, Russell, you know, his whole vibe is a problem, whatever. Like, he and Sean Payton could not be more different as dudes. Like, they just, they're just oil and water. Mm. But you can bridge that gap if on the football field you have that synergy and they just didn't and they didn't to the point where you know Sean Payton said hey look you guys paid me a lot of money to come here and fix this not as much as Russ obviously but you paid me a lot of money to come here and get this back on the right track and like I need a mind meld at quarterback and not only do I not have a mind meld at quarterback but like I cannot figure this guy out and so that's what Ultimately, like, would you have liked to have been able to make it work for another year or two for for monetary reasons? Yeah, but sometimes it's just to the point where I think it it, it is legitimately better for all sides to sort of start fresh. And that's a pretty wild thing to say, considering the Broncos have to figure out where to park eighty five million dollars in dead cap over the next two years. Uh, Parker, considering obviously the Russell Wilson experience experiment didn't work. Uh, where do you see Denver turning next for their quarterback? I, I think people assume they're going to draft one in the first round, but you know maybe there's maybe there's a guy early second that they like a little better. Yeah, you had a great piece, and full disclosure, PG, Robbie and yep. I both love this guy that I think you're getting ready to talk about. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, so do I, but I, it's going to yes. be really interesting. But Denver's problem in the draft is that they pick number 12, which does not seem like a bad place to be. The issue with that, of course, as you guys know, and as probably people that pay attention to the NFL know, is like it is shaping up to probably be a feeding frenzy at quarterback at the top of the draft. And so the Broncos, you know, let's say three guys come off the board the first three picks. Um, J.J. McCarthy is also sort of in that conversation now. Um, seems like that's happened pretty fast. It's wild to of, me. I can't yeah. believe Unbelievable. 
You know what's funny, Robbie, is that like I think I must I've I've been covering the NFL for two years now, and I think I must have like full I, I must have transformed to like full NFL brain because I watch him and I'm like I like him. I you know I think he's I think you're getting a player who's on the up and and who's young and who who will learn and all of that. And then everyone I talk to that covers the Big Ten is like, why would you pick this guy in the top eight? Um, and so it's in, it's just it's interesting. But where the Broncos are is you got to pay an arm and a leg to go up mm-hmm. or you got to find a guy who can work, whether it's at 12 or maybe even by trading back and picking one. And that sort of brings you to the Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. conversation. And I, you know, as, as you guys were referring to, I talked to Luke McCown this week who played quarterback for Sean Payton for five years as a backup in New Orleans. And he, he loves Penix and he thinks, that Sean Payton will watch Penix and love him too. And just because of, you know, because of the obvious arm talent, because of the ability to put the ball exactly where he wants to put it pretty much all the time. And he gets, obviously as the injury thing, that's the big question. He gets a little bit bothered when there's people around him. Um, saw that even like at the senior bowl, it was like that. I was down there and when there were people kind of like around his base, it wasn't like Josh Allen where it just doesn't matter. Um, the accuracy got a little bit squirrely at times, but man, I mean, when he's right and when he knows where he's going with the ball, it's a sight to behold. And so I think you're probably talking about that, that realm of maybe JJ McCarthy, maybe they love Jaden Daniels so much that if he gets past two, they try to figure out a way. But I think more likely you're talking about, you know, that Nick Penix conversation and you could go either way on that. But, um, yeah, I wrote a big story about Michael Penix Jr. for this morning. So um, that's that would be that would be a pretty good guess today. Well, I could not go either way on Bo Nix or Michael Penix because the guy that I understand even less than J.J. McCarthy right now is Bo Nix <laughs> apparently flying up into. I mean, you may not even be able to get Bo Nix at 12 the way people are talking about him right now which is wild to me. I at least sort of understand the J.J. McCarthy thing, although I think he's, I think like middle first round makes more sense for him. I do not understand a world in which people want Bo Nix over Michael Penix. Yeah, it's super interesting, Robbie. And like, I, there's a whole, there's a whole philosophical conversation about, you know, quarterbacks and, and just kind of like what you're aiming to do. Like, obviously, if you're Denver, like you are looking for an answer for a decade, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but in some in some way, like you also, this is the problem with 12. Like if you told me you were going to get Bo Nix at, let's, let's say 40, they don't have a second round pick, but let's say somehow you're moving around the draft. You're going to take him, sure. you know, in the second round or something like that. I, I can buy that just from the sense that like, if he's serviceable, we saw this with Sam Howell. Um, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago where it's like, if a guy is serviceable, he is going to hold value as a quarterback mm-hmm. in the NFL. Bo Nix also played 61 games in college. Like there should be, he, he's going to be asked, he and Michael Penix Jr. Um, and probably the guys at the top two, but those two in particular are, I think they'll be treated as guys who are potential. Like the team that drafts them is hoping that they're a franchise guy, but in a way they're also going to be bridge guys because they've played so much college football. I mean, Bo Nix has started 61 games. You're not saying, okay, you know, Bo Nix, you've got a redshirt year or two. You're probably throwing him in there to see what you've got. And then the question is, you know, is he your guy for, you know, is he is he a he can get you through a couple of years until you really figure it out? Is he actually that guy? Mm-hmm. And the value proposition there's different, obviously, if you get that guy in the second or third round compared to if you spend the number twelve pick on him. Parker, I'm, I'm going to ask you one more NFL question before I get back to Nebraska because I think you're uniquely qualified to talk about both. Um, when you're looking at – you you followed college football for that for a while. You understand it really, really well, much longer than you did the NFL. Do yeah. you get or have you rationalized in your head how the dollars have to make sense and how sometimes – like what you see in college may or may not translate to the NFL level. In your position that's watched so much college football, do you understand kind of the dynamic of the draft process? 
I, a little bit. I mean, it is it is crazy though. I mean, you know, NFL. That there's still that sense. I think you know, NFL people will will fall in love with traits, you know, rather than production. And then there's also part of it that's like, I mean, you could take uh, who's a good example this year. I mean, Dallas Turner's a decent example, right? Like he did he didn't have Will Anderson's production at Alabama, but part of that's like because Will Anderson was there until this year. And so, like in some at some level. You know, you, you're betting that a guy with that, you know, skill set and a guy who came on strong as last year um, is going to turn into, you know, that kind of player. Like if you were going to draw the, I don't know, 10 best players in college football last year, would he make the list? M- maybe he would, but not if you were going by, certainly not if you're going by stats and probably not if you're going even by who had the most sort of eye popping you know, freakish season, but he is going to be picked probably in the top 10 because of, you know, how you're projecting. And of course, the value of getting after the quarterback. So there's a lot, I mean, there's so many, you know, like think about the Broncos just traded Jerry Judy, who's a good wide receiver who has not fully tapped into his potential yet. And they got a fifth and sixth round pick for him. They gave up, a. they got a fifth and a sixth for him. And then he got, 41 million fully guaranteed and 19 million a year on an extension from Cleveland. So, the question and you don't even like, know who's going to be throwing in passes and at what level, right? Like that's yeah, weird. Right, and not only that, but like you've seen the skill set, but you've not seen him, you know, do it at a number one wide. But at this level, at this point, 19 million a year is not even number one wide receiver money in the NFL. Mm. So, like, I, they're like they're they're thinking, well, we could pay Marvin then a million two this year and get similar production to Jerry Judy at 19 million a year. That's a no brainer, but that makes you wonder like, how is it when Marvin Harrison and Roma Dunze and Malik neighbors are at the top of the draft, that there's still guys that, you know, Calvin Ridley gets 24 million a year. So it's a, it's a wild world. And, uh, you know, college football is now these days too. Yeah. Let me ask you this just cause, uh, part of it is because you're pretty measured. Um, and the other is because you have range, right? So from Bozeman to where all the places that you've been. Why do you think when you were here and you're seeing it now play out real time that Nebraska has struggled with the whole chancellor, president, AD, football? Like, why is that dynamic, in your opinion, do you think so elusive in this, in, with, with Nebraska athletics? Like, what yeah, did you see? That's a great question, Damon. I, you know, because I, I mean, what I covered a couple of presidents. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ted, Carter, Ted Carter wasn't there for, for very long before I left, but there, but it was the transition from Hank Bound to Ted Carter. And then obviously, like, technically, I guess I covered three ADs. Um, you know, I think... Part of it is when you look around, like I remember, I remember doing this when Bill Moose left and obviously like there, you know, I don't, I don't think Moose was, was bad in, in every way. Certainly he was, he was interesting to cover. Um, But there, when you look around, like there, these are not like legacy jobs anymore. And, And that's not particular to Nebraska. I mean, I think that's, that's the way it is. So you have an environment now where somebody who is in AD for 10 years at one school is the exception rather than the rule. I mean, that's, that's part of it. I was stunned, obviously, that Trev left. I didn't, I hadn't been, just been following from afar, obviously. But so that's part of it. And then, you know, there's so many schools that have, I think it, it's interesting because like the Big Ten and the SEC are separating in terms of their, the financial power and just a massive windfall of money. And at the same time, there's a lot of schools out there that have a lot of money. And so you don't, you just don't have the same. It's not like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, uh, Nebraska and I'm going to be the AD there for 25 years. I'm going to, I grew up in Bozeman. I'm going to Montana state. I just want to be the AD there. And that's all. Like if you're good, you're you're gonna have opportunities. And if you don't 
do well enough, you're going to be out and teams are making those schools are making those decisions really fast. So, I mean, look at how fast Nebraska moved to hire Troy Dannon. Mm -hmm. And it almost like when you're talking about coaching searches, AD searches, this cycle, it seems like obviously Matt rule was, was a lot different last year, but like when you look at the, the interval now, it's like, you'd better have somebody in in a week. That's preposterous. I mean, that, that, <laughs> that, that, is, that is incredible to me. Like that, that's, but that's where it is. It's like, hey, the collective needs to know. The guys going in the portal need to know. Everybody needs to know. And mm. so it's like, like when Nick Saban retired, and that, that seemed like that had been sort of maybe going on behind the scenes. But, the, but Byrne came out and said, like, we'll have a replacement in 72 hours. Like that, that is fundamentally much different than it was even five years ago or 10 years ago. And so I, part of it is just the like, some of it maybe is just desensitization or decent. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say that word, but being desensitized to the amount of change that there is in college athletics now, it's like, Oh, okay. The AD left. Well, well, we better just go hire another one. Coach left. We'll go hire another one. Mm. Quarterback left for $2 million somewhere. Let's just go to the portal and find another one. So it's sort of like it's always been there's always been a lot of change but it just seems like there's a lot more now i know that's not a nebraska specific answer but that's part of what it looks like from from here parker we're talking with parker gabriel of the denver post parker as you kind of you know i every time this happens you talk about this this sped up timeline and i kind of think about how Hmm. some of the biggest decisions we make in our lives are done in abbreviated timelines and yeah. I, I just I go to buying a house right think about how much time you actually spend in the house you're about to buy before you actually buy it it's like maybe an hour right <laughs> like you do the initial visit and then maybe a walkthrough and if you take your time on both of those you spend maybe an hour in a house and then you're going to make the biggest purchase of your life based on that hour and that's kind of what all these universities are doing now too you have like one, maybe two conversations with a guy. Maybe you meet him in person. Maybe you don't. And then all of a sudden you're like, all right, here's several million dollars in the keys to the kingdom. Let's go. Like it's, we're doing insane things here, right? Like how do you not get to spend the night in a house that you want to buy? Like that doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> that would be, a, you know, maybe you could carve out a, maybe you could build a real estate empire on the idea that like, Hey, if you, if you buy a house for me, we find a way to get you in the house for a night before you actually, you actually do it. Um, I mean, yeah, it's I crazy when you think about it, right? Yeah. But recruiting has gone that way too. Right. I mean, like Deion Sanders sort of went by. I, 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 I still can't believe Especially that. Well, with the portal. We're going to get to that later. That's right in your backyard. Like W T H. Parker yeah how, how does that, that play <laughs> I was up there too I, I was up there on Tuesday I was not he said that I, that was a Wednesday thing when he was talking about how he'd never you know done an in-home visit or been to a high school or something since he'd been the coach of Colorado and I was up there the day before so this was this is just like a I know it's different at Colorado and it's an extreme example but I was at their pro day on uh, Tuesday and they're not, they didn't, there were no guys working out that were like, Xavier Weaver's hurt. So I went up there just to kind of see what was going on. And um, nine guys worked out. And I asked one of the staffers if any of them had been there for two years or four years. And they just laughed. They're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, uh, 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 it's 2024. Right. Mm -hmm. And a a college coach gets up there and says, no, I don't want to come to your house. Basically, a lot of the kids who are recruiting, they're going to be embarrassed if we come to to their house. I want them to come here. And like, can you imagine? uh, And he feels like he's uniquely qualified. I'm like, that's not true, because if if Frost went to to Bellevue West and didn't go to Westside, like. Westside would be mad, right? Like, yeah, I, it's not yeah. just because you're a Florida guy. It, that is so not unique to you. This the warp sense of self worth was I I couldn't believe I was hearing it out loud. The funny thing about it though, Damon, was I, there was this part of me that was I'm you know I've, I know enough college coaches. I've seen enough of them. 
do the recruiting whirlwind thing that I was thinking like all, everyone who's every coach who sees this is going to be like, what in the world is this guy talking about? And there's going to be a small part of their brain that is going to be like, he's a genius. What like, like the thing, the answer to the question is like, yeah, they are going to be mad. That's why you just do it 18 hours a day. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, run yourself into the ground going to 25 schools a day. Like that's, that's part of the reason why you do that is that way the schools don't get mad at you, but maybe the real answer is, Oh, just don't go. <laughs> just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest. That doesn't seem super sustainable. I, no. I do. I do like that answer though, PG and you're smart. Like that's why I kind of asked you because but he's only a genius At, if it works. That's the problem. That's the thing, that's right? The you, all- so what I was going to say is you don't know the success story yet. It's only right. genius if he recruits at a high level over time and you're like, oh, maybe there is something to that. Because in a at, in a nut, like at first blush, it's like, so you're just not going to go anywhere? And mm-hmm. Parker, can you shed any light? Because I heard, and I don't know if this is true, and, and you're an actual journalist, and I just talk on the radio. Um, <laughs> do you know, I heard or read or something, that he actually gets a cut of the recruiting budget that they that they save? Is that, do you know if that's accurate? I, I don't know if that's true. I, 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 I'm not saying it's not. I, I don't know if it's true. Okay. I, know, I know that there's, I know that it's a unique... I know that there's a unique revenue setup. I mean, and I don't know all of it, but I just know that if you go up to Boulder, like we're the lobby that we did interviews at after pro days outside the team store in the stadium. And like, it is not, it is not like, you know, go buffs or whatever. Like it's prime ev- everywhere, everywhere. I mean, it has been the, the whole program has been entirely primified and you guys, I mean, I'm sure you, sell that even like in September last year up here now you just have several more months of that and the and the wave of the early season and all that um to go with it but like so I don't know how the how all of that works um but so so like, clearly everybody is okay with one man being significantly greater than the institution for now yeah you saw uh, the AD was named the AD of the year and it's because he brought that guy in, and it's a lot different and older than it was a year ago. I don't get better otherwise. Than wow. AD of the year for a Parker, four you, win you, team. You, Incredible. You, you continue to never disappoint, man. Your range is spectacular. We'll have to catch up again soon. Yep, no doubt. Thanks, PG. We've got more. Herd at Sports Radio coming up next. We're halfway through the show here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. At the DB, I'm Ravi Lula. We're on the Pillar Exterior stage. And if you would like to have a March of a Lifetime, you got to make sure you activate your entries that you got for the War Horse Casino Million Dollar Challenge. You got to go to the casino in Lincoln, which you should do anyway, because then you, know, you can maybe place a few bets on some games today. Um, go out there, get your, I don't know how that's relevant, but. Go out there, get your entries. He wants you to do it today. Uh, yes, I do want you to do it today. You've got until – you've got through Monday, though. Nope, just kidding. That is Sunday. You've got through Sunday, the 24th, to activate those entries uh, for that bracket challenge to win a million dollars with a perfect bracket. Your prop card challenge, you've got through the 28th to get more entries for that, and you can win $100,000 on that prop card challenge. Those props are for the semifinal and finals of the tournament game. Make sure you go to warhorsecasino.com for more details on how trying to win a little bit of money. Have a memorable march, not just for our guy, Jack Golke, but for you as well. Wasn't that crazy? That was one of – that's – I mean, okay. Let's let's do this now. Tom Izzo can pry the mid-majors out of my cold, dead hands. All right? <laughs> this is the reason – why your tournament that has, by the way, made you millions, Tom Izzo, despite the fact that you haven't really done jack in a, eh, I mean, 2000 was a long time ago now, bud. I'm just saying, long time ago. Mateen Cleaves ain't walking through that door. Muddy Cleaves? Mo that's, Peterson ain't walking through that door. That's what I used to call him. Tom Izzo out here hating on mid-majors and automatic buys. Guess what? We don't get Jack Golke without mid-majors getting automatic buys, all right? And that's the thing at the end of the day 
That is why people love this tournament as much as they do. Mm. Otherwise, it's just another sporting event. So if you're right now, if you're John Calipari, are you getting rid of all your staff? Are you firing yourself? I think you have to reevaluate. Or are you the looking? Are you asking way. if you're in Lexington? Are you asking who has 33 mil? Well, I know people in Lexington are asking who has 33 mil, and I'm guessing the University of Kentucky boosters do, right? Because he's the highest paid coach in the land by a mile. I think he's in. The, I think he's like 12. Like eleven or twelve, which is the next guy is six or eight by a mile. I mean, there's a there's a gap there, right? But I think if you're John Calipari, you have to ask yourself if this is a sustainable way to run your program. And I think the answer is a resounding no. For the amount of talent that he's come through there, he's got one national title. That's underperforming. I mean, it just is. If you're watching that game last night, yeah. isn't it crazy how what's ailed you all year is what continued to to do you in you just couldn't get a stop i mean it's not crazy it's it's totally logical you, it is you, the most logical thing to happen my point in saying that and is, their three-point defense in, in particular ravi yes is over time if you're developing you continually try to get better get better yeah and work on your weaknesses or did you just throw in the towel and say okay because more, more I, I saw it yesterday, because for out. the guy that you keep hating on in Izzo, they sure seem to score the ball and shoot it better than they did sure. all year yesterday. I'm not hating on him as a coach. I'm hating on him on his but what I'm philosophies. Saying, but what I'm saying is, yeah. is like, that's what coaching is. Yeah. It's not to sit idly by. Caleb, I mean, listen, we've I've had this argument with, I don't know if I've had it with you. I've had it with Matt DeMarinas about how, how good of a coach is John Calipari, right? Incredible recruiter. I think he's pretty good. I don't think anybody's on still on the he's a good coach thing, are they? I mean, is Dean Marinas that would disappoint me? No, no, no. He thinks he's not a good coach. Okay, at all. I was gonna say like I think that's been proven, my only, especially offensively. My only argument is recruiting is part of the equation, right? It's the same thing with Tony Bennett. If you're not getting guys that can score the ball, part of that's on you, or all of that's on you because that's your job too, right? So we can't separate. You can tell me, hey, Calipari's terrible at X's and O's. I'd be like, yeah, I can't argue with you there. He's terrible at development. Ah, yeah, I can't really argue with you there. Totally fair, right? But the other half of it, the recruiting, the player acquisition, all of that, he's incredible at, right? So he's really, really good, probably elite at at least half of his job, right? Now, the other half, that matters. Compare, apparently, he can fundraise. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of the factors of his job that he's actually really good at. Although, now that, the that actual, might be kind of built in being in maybe Lexington. Although not, I mean, we've seen play... We've seen people go to other places. I, I'm thinking about football coaches in Texas that aren't good at that, and it shows, right? Like Charlie Strong was not good at that part of the job. He just wants to go, go coach football. He doesn't want to have to run for governor while he's doing it, mm -hmm. right? Calipari is okay with the running for governor part. He's okay with the shaking hands and kissing babies and recruiting players. It's the actual coaching of basketball that's a little bit tricky for him. <laughs> and I, it sounds funny, and it sounds like I'm saying that facetiously. Oh, because I think part of it is you are. But he's actually really good at a, a decent chunk of the job. He really is. And you can't sit here and, and look at a guy that's made Final Fours at three different schools, although I think only two of them still count, or one of them still counts. But we saw him make, okay, UMass, Memphis, and Kentucky make Final Fours. Like, I can't sit here and say that guy's a bad basketball coach, right? Like, maybe he's not the way people viewed him at one time, but there is a... There's an argument to be made that the thing that he pioneered, the one and done, and just going all in on that, no longer works for him. You do realize, though, like, have you just thought to yourself that Tubby Smith mm -hmm. and John Calipari have the same amount of national championships at Kentucky? Yeah, that's incredibly damning for John Calipari. Yeah. It's the same way that Sean Payton having the same number of Super Bowls as Mike McCarthy is incredibly damning. But we, we've at least acknowledged now that they're the same. Person. We have now. We have now, but for a long time we didn't. Ah, uh, you're right. Probably up to like the last two years. Yeah, until, because I didn't start hearing the McCarthy until he returned Payton, to Denver. Until he came back. Yes, he and, was this mythical. He was the guy that was supposed to fix Dallas mm -hmm. after they inevitably fired McCarthy. Right? So, so it's like, yeah, because I remember I had a meltdown. By the way, though, of, of 
why would you give up draft picks to get rid of a guy that you're replacing it's the, it's exact the same, same guy? Yeah, yeah it's that's like, I remember. It's the Superman sense. meme where you're just pointing at each other and you look. Is the it Spider Man or Superman? Oh, it's Spider Man. It's Spider Man. It's Spider Man. Um, Shane's getting a it, comic. Spider Man's my Huckleberry. So, hey, Shane, <laughs> what, what time are you going to get that new comic book? I, I got it yesterday. Did you? I'll, I'll yeah. be your Huckleberry. Yeah. Um. Nice. But let's let's not forget. Same number of national titles as Tom Izzo, by the way. Also. Yeah, so I so like, watched the, that part of it's hard. I watched the semifinals. I think it was the semifinals. Did they play Florida in the semis or or the Elite Eight or it wasn't the championship when, when Michigan State won it? They Mon- I believe Mon- beat Florida in the title. Was that the title game? Because yeah, Muddy so. Cleaves rolled his ankle. Yeah, and I then believe came that back was the title and, game. Yeah. Um in two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was the title game. By the way, mm-hmm. let's play a little game real quick. Yeah, let's do it. We got two minutes. I think you can do it. There's six schools that have won multiple national championships since 2000. North Carolina is one. Duke is two. Kansas is three. Yukon is four. Florida five. Oh, uh, Villanova. Isn't that weird? What? Like, that's it. It's hard to win more than one. It's hard to win one. Really hard to win more than one. It's pretty good, though. But for the way that we talk about Tom Izzo, it's kind of a, kind of a hole in his resume. <laughs> we talk about Izzo like he's, a, like he's an all-timer. We do, right? We talk about like he's an all-timer. Correct. All the other all-timers have more than one. That's all I'm saying. No, I, I don't even disagree with that. Like, do you, he, he do you, can be do, in that next year if he wants to be. Yeah, but, but you, you know who they have next on the docket. For their coach? No, for their matchup. Who's that? North Carolina. Yeah. I'm going to leave Izzo alone for the time being. That's fine. I'm going to I'm gonna just point out some historical. Because it's not like I'm fawning over Hubert Davis. No. Although, I, although I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, and I've said this all along, Carolina, while they may be the weakest one, mm-hmm. is, and I've said this from for since I've been back, very, very cape. They're one of the few teams that can win a national championship. Yeah, you have said that. You've said that for a while. Yeah. Um, I do want to. You, you, I'm glad you brought up Hubert Davis because I think we have another open segment here. Maybe. I don't are, know. are we going to get on Hubert? No, I want to ask. A, I want to ask a question about the coaches of the top seeds, and which one of those you trust versus which ones would be like the Kevin Ollies of this situation if they were to win a national title. Well, he's the only one of the top seeds that hasn't. Is has been there for the shortest amount of time. I'm. I want to make an argument for. I get he's been there the shortest amount of time, but I also think that means we don't really know what he is yet. Uh, Do we? I, he's I, he's only I, been there a few years. I struggle. I know you struggle, but it's also really close to home for you. Yeah. I want to make an argument for another guy that I think would be an outlier. Okay, we'll get to that coming up next on Herd Sports Radio. Wrapping up hour number two here on Herd Sports Radio, AM five ninety ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We are live on the Pillar Exterior stage. And I know there's some big crowds down at CHI Health Center last night. Hopefully, there'll be another big crowd at CHI Health Center on Thursday. So disappointed. Why is that? Oh, we got to talk Supernovas first. I don't All know. right. We will, get to, we will get to whatever you're disappointed in. I was happy because last time out on Saturday, March 16th, where the Supernovas won three to one over the Orlando Valkyries. You guys got my 12,000 that I was looking for. I appreciate that. Setting more records. Let's see what we can do. Let's keep upping it. All right. I I think, uh, you know, lucky number 13 is in order now. Let's go for 13,000 on Thursday, March 28th for the Omaha Supernovas. Go get tickets at supernovas.com. You can look at the schedule, see their results. Supernovas are five and one at home. You know why? Because that home court advantage. Make sure they keep the good times rolling at CHI Health Center. That's supernovas.com. All right. Why are you disappointed? Because I was scared. About what? I, I I just didn't like, and a lot of it was Drake, so I'm not right. Like, I'm not saying like, ooh, DB. Mm-hmm. But I told you, Washington State is better yeah. than, than people think. Like, Washington State's a good basketball team. I think no one just had watched them. But right? I still think, I still think that was Drake's game to, to win. Kind of the same thing like last year. I'm I'm just shocked, and I and if that's the first time you've watched Tucker DeVries, first of all, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to chastise you, but that's how he plays. Yeah, right. Just there, usually goes there, in there. There, there are some shots that he takes, and you're like, no way. But 
usually goes you, in a little you bit kind, more. You kind of live and die. You don't get this live without me, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. With his shot selection. I like that. It's better when you use it. <laughs> well, it's the same thing we talk about with Casey. It's the same thing you talk about with a lot of these guys where there's a lot of there, there's high variance. It's a really high degree of difficulty on the shots. Which, by the way, man, speaking of Walt Kowalski, if you want to tell me to get off your lawn, mm-hmm. I will. But were you bothered at all by the half court over the head thing that he did yesterday that everybody was tweeting? No. No. Okay. Why? So, I, I guess, like, why did it bother you? Because Nebraska's not a gimmick. No, I think it's so. Do, do I need, like, I, I'm here for it. Like, lighten up, DB. That's cool. Like, I can't stand that. So it's prop. Here's my perspective. Here's where my, my frame of reference is for it, right? Okay. I watched Steph Curry warm up so much. Yeah, and that I I roll my eyes. At and he that does too. this stuff all the time. I roll my and eyes I at get, that too. And that's fine. But I and I get K say is not Curry, even though you want people call him Japanese Steph Curry, whatever. Like I get he's not him, but when I am used to seeing it from a guy like Steph, like it didn't even really register for me as something that would be bothersome. So so I have to and I'm honest, right? Like when when I'm an idiot, like I'm gonna be like, Hey man, I'm an idiot. That's my bad. Yeah. Right? But I'm listening, and it started all week that rubbed me the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And and I don't even know why I pay to, like, really give Pat McAfee a thought. I, although I'm not hating on his marketing and, and, and how yeah, he's Yeah, not hating the hustle, brown. just not for you. Like, y- you made not being in the know. Somebody a, else's problem. A cool thing. Mm. Yeah. Right? Like. How did I not know about this case? Hey, Tominaga, and I, I get it. You want to blame Will Compton, and that's cool. They, they got a little shtick and all of that, but, um, like the attention that Nebraska deserves mm-hmm. is, is that they're as, a good basketball team. Yes, I get it. It's not a gimmick. It's not. This isn't some publicity stunt. And I and 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 so I have to kind of like chill. It's like. All right, there's a little anecdotal evidence out there, and this has kind of become a funny thing. And you know, Mina Kimes and everybody else, and this, I'm like, you know what? That's not what this team is about. Like, there are a lot of people here. There's like, I don't know, what is there, 1.9 in the state, something like that, just under two. So yeah. there's probably what, 300,000 basketball fans. Uh, maybe more than that, but sure, we'll call it. That's okay. Fine. Like that have you? You go all the way back to. I mean, Brian Carr, if you will, or or you can go Jerry Fort or like forever mm-hmm. that have been basketball fans that don't want it to be about the gimmicks and the publicity stunts. And so can I put a different spin on it? Yeah, but hang on. Okay. So it's like, all right, oh man, DB, relax, have some fun. All attention's good attention. And if I trusted that Nebraska could dial in and handle it more, or they were a little more seasoned or had some tournament history mm-hmm. under their belt, I would be cool with it. Mm-hmm. But I get mad because because you're worried. Yeah, I don't I, I don't want them to be distracted by the foolishness. Better That's to, foolishness. Sure. Nobody's shooting that shot. And the stuff that Curry does, unless he's out of bounds mm-hmm. at in in warm-ups, he's actually going to shoot. Everything this. is viable. Yeah, it's fair game. If he wants to pull up from forty-one, he'll pull up from forty-one. Okay, so like I feel like it's not my job to be protective, but that's how I think about it. As as a guy that watch a coach and a coaching staff, well, some of the coaching staff almost lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. So let me. Let me put a little spin on this for you. Just is that, to see is that, is that a... just too serious? No, I, I do, mean I get what you're saying. To, do you want me to eat some bacon and chill? No, I get what you're. I get what you're saying. I think so. Having done, having been through a ton of pregame walkthroughs and and that kind of stuff, usually at the end, there's I know a everybody does it. Period of time. It's not, it's not my first rodeo. Kind of do whatever, right? Yeah. So that didn't bother me at all. The other thing is, I think there is some value in staying loose which I think that helps with. Here's the third thing, though, and the most important, is we had this conversation about if you get the opportunity, do you care how it comes? 
that's how I view this. You asked Nebraska. me that the last time about Bronny and, I, and his son, and and part of me says yes. I know you do. I know part of you does, right? And there's a part of me that has in the past. But I think at the end of the day, if you're in Nebraska and you get an opportunity to show everyone how good you are, then it's on you to take advantage of that opportunity. When I got an interview for a job when I'm like 26 and probably didn't deserve that interview, but they liked my mom because they'd worked with her before. Yeah, I know that 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 would bug me. But then it's on me to do a, to it's, to nail the interview and do a good job. I, I know I'm not that mature. Like that bug that would bug me. That's fine, and it did bug me for a minute. It like, it's like it, listen, it it bugged me. Like I might have got the interview because of that. I didn't get the job or keep the job for as long as I the, did. The first people to interview me at oh, and I'm just full disclosure, right? The first people to want to call me mm -hmm. and said, hey. Let's get you in back into education. This is your degree. We're Jerry Barty and, and Bob Dananar, mm -hmm. two guys that have been really, really, really good friends of the family. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, are they doing this? Are they doing me a solid? Do they want the district to maybe they think I can help? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, you don't think I spend time like rationalizing that? Sure. So like, it's just different for everybody. So I say all that to say, not to make it about me or you, but I like the personal analogy because it fits. Yeah. Nebraska's it the the program and the emotions and talking to 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 Kent Pavelka yes the other day. Mm -hmm. it, like it's bigger than that. It is. To Steve Sipple, it's it's bigger than that. But when the opportunity comes, it's your responsibility to take it. But advantage. that's not what it's about. What do you mean? It's not about hitting half court shots and and the Japanese Steph Curry and the fun loving Kase Tokmanaga. This team is built on chemistry, camaraderie, hundred percent, and the way that they play. But that's, and there are that's times I mean, where this though. dude is on the floor. There's times and that not he's on off the floor, the floor and he's not crunch playable. time because he's not he can't play. I understand that. So listen, I want it to be bigger than that. And they're getting the opportunity because all the eyeballs that Kase Tomonaga opens, they get the opportunity. To show that it's bigger than oh, that. They okay. get the opportunity that they wouldn't have if it's just Bryce Williams out there scoring 12 points a game. And I love Bryce Williams. Well, that, that would be a bad example because he doesn't even talk. So That's what I mean, though. Like, if you're just sitting there and it's like, oh, Nebraska A&M, it's another 8-9 matchup. Let's take the Trev thing out of it. Let's say there's no drama. There's no attention. There's nothing around it. I mean, they get defensive stops. They guard. I they understand play unique that. Like this. I'm, telling you, be... I'm telling you where my vitriol, but there's gonna where be... it comes from. They get an opera because of Kase, even if it's, it's not, not because of Kase, no, stop. he's the attention getter. That's what I was going to say. You got to give me a second here. Well, when you said it's because of Kase, no, not. I said because of Kase and all the eyeballs are on it because of Kase. I'm not saying they're good because of Kase. This I'm dude, saying people hey, are watching. He just looked at a 50 year old dude and said, stop. I don't know if I should. <laughs> I don't know if I should right hook you right where it would short your brain cells um, out. But I'm listening because. You're missing the point. What is the point? I love the eyeballs. I love the attention. I like the fact that Casey has fun. If I could go back and do it, I would have relaxed a lot more and had, had fun, more fun doing playing basketball. But Nebraska isn't a gimmick. It's not a stunt. I get that. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Because my point is that they can, because of the attention that Casey creates, now they get an opportunity to show, show more people who they actually are. I feel like I'm getting ready to go soccer fan on you. I do. You, but you, you like gotta, soccer you and I like soccer. Me? Is that not what happens? It is. It's like when you're new to the party. I go watch the World Cup because of Messi. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, oh, Messi could win his first World Cup. And then I'm like, holy crap, this Mbappe dude is incredible. Right. Right. And you realize how great the product is. But and and soccer fan is usually the they most bristle up about it. They're the most protective of their sport, and that's fine. But they're they're in the wrong, and you know it. No, well, because you're gonna say, "Well, you want to grow the sport, right?" Yeah, if you want to grow in a basket basketball. It doesn't you're, matter why the eyeball. Yeah, are but there. you know what soccer fan would tell you? What? Not if you're not in it for the long haul. This ain't this isn't some fun gimmick. Like we paid a price to be. You did tertiary or or way down the line. If you want to grow the thing that you love. You have to understand that some people are going to be in it for the long haul. Some people aren't. Guess what? And there's going to be a conversion rate. Some you, of the people you, you didn't you, think you, were you are win, going you, to be. You win tonight, regardless of who plays well, you're playing the long game. And that's because great. Got... But more people are going to be watching tonight if you do win because of K-State. Okay. That's a net positive for Nebraska. All right. And they can show them who they really are and why they're actually good at basketball. I think you're a ding-dong. And it's not just some dude.
shooting half court shots over his head. Mike Sowers up next. We're kicking off our number three here on Herd at Sports Radio, AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. Literally fighting with one another. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We'll see if we're still friends by the end of the show. It's a good thing it's a Friday. We get a little break from each other. Uh, we've got uh, Mike Sodder here joining us on the good old. What is he on the street? There he is. Sodder, what's going on? What's going on? Why you got a job interview today? Where are you uh, get, no, where are you I going? Got, I got a funeral today. Oh, whoops, sorry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just out here throwing I half- couldn't wait for him to have to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I, it's very uncomfortable, I, Mike I'm with just, your own. I'm just out here throwing half court shots behind my head because it's fun, Damon. Yeah. It's fun. Sports Try are supposed and, to be fun sometimes. Sports are fun. If you can't yeah. have fun, then I know, I know. Gonna, every every gonna, every everybody at the end of shoot arounds hitting ridiculous shots. That That's what people, they do. Pe- That's what they do. No bleep. <laughs> so, so why does it matter no, when Casey does it? It's not a Casey thing. Are you not listening? I'm trying real hard. <laughs> the basketball team is more than just a gimmick stunt. This team has been good all year it's not an indictment against Casey. it's just that's what people that don't follow gravitate towards which cheapens the product that's how i feel what's so hard to understand about that it only cheapens the product if the team itself does not rise to the occasion it's not about not having fun it doesn't have anything to do with i don't care if bryce williams shot it hey speaking of bryce Speaking of Bryce Williams, he's the best player on the team. He's my favorite player on the team. Yeah, him. water's wet. A couple of couple of regular geniuses I'm talking to. No kidding. What else? Is there 24 hours in a day, Jerome? Well, everyone else says, thinks it's Case A. Tominaga. He's not. The no, best see, see that that proves my point no, right there. A lot of people what what he just outside. said. Proves, what Michael Sauter just said proves my point. That's not even remotely true. Not even remotely true. I agree with you. Yeah. Is it, I mean, he, I agree that he's not the best player on the team. That's fine. He could have he could have five points today, and they could still win by fifteen. So, Ooh, would, like, would that we, be something that they could win by fifteen? That would be a, that and would man, be a, that would be a damn blowout. That case they brought to the table would be like, oh man, Nebraska's good at basketball. Right. Isn't that great, Jerome? I'm sitting next to soccer guy this morning. Hey, no, Jerome. you're soccer guy. What oh, are you wow. doing? Are yeah. you going to throw that softball at his head? Probably. So you should have seen the break. <laughs> it was as active as I've been. He was milling around a little bit. Like I, I had to keep, I, I had to burn some energy. Wow. <laughs> how are how are things in Memphis? Besides the fact you ate a bad plate of ribs. The, oh, no. uh, I went to, yeah, rendezvous. You know they're known for ribs and brisket. Brisket. I, I have I have fired. bought their I bought their seasoning. Full disclosure, yeah. I have two, and one of them is unopened. But brisket is their brisket was amazing. The ribs were pretty dry and not. They fine. looked it. I was surprised you sent that as a picture. It was. Yeah. It did not look appealing. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, wasn't my favorite. Um, but it's okay. You know, it's one of those things. Like you're in Memphis, you got to go here because it's the famous place to do. Won't be, like, won't like be when, when in Memphis, right? And then uh, did some other stuff that is adult only last night. So yeah, I, I it is good to see that you were didn't realize they had a Magic City in Memphis alive and kicking. Oh wow, no, not that kind of. <laughs> Who's like, say it's all the only like a di- like a diver from? Yeah, Syria. you're not yeah. you're not afraid yeah. to be by yourself out in strange cities. So, no. Did you go out with anybody? Yeah, yeah, we were. Yeah, I was with. Uh, no, shout out, no block, no rock guys last night. Oh, um, I'm telling you, those guys get it in. They're coming tonight. Uh, yeah, today, they're gonna be at yeah. Albert's on Beale if you want to. Listen, Memphis, Alfred's, go hang, Alfred's, Alfred's right Alfred's across on Beale if you want to go hang yeah. out. Those yeah. guys, I the podcast that I did with them, I think it was five guys. Yeah, uh, at least four. One, four. one, two, three, four. four, four. Somebody at the end, yeah, it was four. So between the two, the between the four of them, but it was kind of a longer podcast. But the, How many beers they go through? Uh, Couple. Is is double <laughs> no? Is double digits as, a, as in its totality? Yeah, like they they get it in. Yeah, they do. I, w- I will tell you, they are uh, sharing a room in the same room that like size of room that I have, and I'm like, you guys must really like each other. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm too old for that. <laughs> like 
the full size the full size bed is more of a twin ish. Mm. Yeah. Well, so who, I wouldn't be didn't you that. put Padilla in the tub last week? Come on. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, he was in the closet. He just, he just laid down the he just put him on the ironing board and said you can sleep on there. Uh he was on the pull out couch thing. Okay. It, yeah. I mean tub is probably fine too. If you just get a comforter or something, you'd make it. <laughs> He's tough. You gotta be a little gritty out here. Hey, so do you when you're when you're doing this thing and and because I know you do with high school kids, mm. like you're the perfect guy to be having this segue with. You get very, very protective over something that you've done over time and you see Johnny come lately. Do you under do you kind of understand what I think this magnitude of the moment means for Nebraska basketball based on versus the national media's you yeah. know kind of this fun loving story? Yeah, it's it's a little annoying. Um I agree with you on that because it's kind of like it's not just Casey making wild shots. I mean they're actually a pretty good team. Uh, and they have pretty good players. Like Rink Mass is the, leading the team in assists, and he is the center. So like that that should be talked about. He's Rink Mass has played uh, internationally for his home country team. So has Kese. Um Kese just gets all the attention. But I do understand what you're saying, uh, Ravi. Where and it's, it's, and it's not an anti. It's yeah. I don't even know Kese. What I'm it's saying not, is 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 like. Take don't just take a bite. The take the whole slice. Represented because of the infatuation. I, I do. I do think the team right. gets misrepresented. It's, I, do. it, it's, I don't disagree with even. And maybe it's not my job to be protective. Of that. I just don't it's just think how it's I, as big of a negative as you seem to think. It's it just. Is. I'm just telling you how it makes me feel. I, no, I didn't. Fine. I didn't. I didn't. I think it's better for the program. I told you how it made me feel. That's not fair. not what I think the byproduct. Listen, is. I'm all about validating feelings. That's fine. I'm okay. And, it, it's the another analogy for it is like don't don't just take the bite of the pizza eat the whole slice like because it'll be better if you eat the whole slice than, so than one bite i i say this that, so full disclosure this is partly on the heels was it cats who did the halftime interview of indiana cats was okay every question was about the the three-point barrage mm -hmm. And Coach Hoiberg kept trying to bring it back, bring it back yep. to the totality of the second half. And right. we blew a lead against them before. And then the follow up question was about the three point barrage. And he kept saying, Well, like I said. So part of what you're hearing in that last 10 minutes is it's accumulation. Yes, it's, an, it's a culmination of things. And you're doing a disservice to when your head coach has to has to bring it back to the team in its totality like it's getting out of hand can well, i make an argument that no is? you can't okay. this is not go ahead mike no that's okay um i one of the things today that we'll see is i i think they win and i think it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination i do think they win and i think it's because of their defense they're going to get a couple of stops late now if you just lay up line that thing, like, ain't I know they got fellas. Yeah, like but it they ain't, can't shoot. That's the thing. Right. Not, not they, a bit. they well, they've yeah, shot, but they, but they do have some fellas. Though. They've shot. They've and shot. Rebound half of their terrible misses. Yeah. They've shot over forty percent from three the last six games, so that scares you a little bit. Or five of the last six, so that scares you. Um, they also have scored over 80 or in the 90s in the last handful of games as well now if nebraska scores 80 they're winning and they're winning by a bit like probably 8 to 12 if they score 80 um i, I think they win by double figures uh if if they don't i, I, they I do think win. this game gets into the 70s i just don't know if that's advantage nebraska yeah i mean they're both averaging seven the they're both averaging 77 and averaging giving up like 74. It's it, it it's a pretty even matchup. You can really see why it's an 8-9 matchup if you dig really deep in the numbers like I did, which you can find on uh, hillvarsity.com. The preview that I wrote was over a 1,000 words for the game with a lot of statistics in there like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to plug that real quick because I worked all week on it. 
Well, we work together. We work. No, I know. Same, we work it's, for the same company. It, That's I, okay. Yeah, it, yeah. Those shameless plugs, we we can we can get behind. The the rebounding thing is going to. be I mean, no block, issue. no rock does do their podcast with us, right? Right. It's, yeah, they do. Can, yeah. The, shout out, shout out to those guys. And they do drink a lot. They the, yes, I saw them on on the on the internet last night. They were getting it. I left Florida. <laughs> and that's hard to do, right? Least, I don't even mix drinks, like, and so <laughs> I'm no priss. <laughs> at least you didn't see. Uh, uh, at least you didn't see me on the internet last night. So. Were you on the internet? No, nah, I mean, I hoped I wasn't. A little bit more discreet than the uh, NBNR guys are. No, I just would prefer that if I'm uh, being an adult to not be on the internet. Yeah, that's yeah. novel. Once you I reach almost, a certain age, it's not cool anymore. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I did. I may need to talk to Pat today and get that headband back that I had on yesterday. I like that. So, Sorry, yeah. you got to flex on him next time. You got to lose the sleeves. Yeah, I was in the moment real quick. We had to do it real fast because there's people wanting interviews and stuff. So I didn't want to be right. really, really in the way. I got. I'm flexing today though. The fit today is, is yeah pretty good. Yeah, it's, so, I mean, this is the inside of the coat. Nice. Well, I like that. It's yeah. terrible radio, but I like the last, last, last time I wore this jacket to, that I have on today was uh, one uh, Mike J. Sha- Mike J. Shaper's wedding. Oh, nice. So I only brought. I only brought. Oh, wait. Out for, open that again. I only busted out for important. Oh yeah, things. he and he wanted to fight me because I said his wife picked it out, and he literally lost his mind at the dinner table. Yeah, that's. I, yeah, we don't. Your boy can dress himself. <laughs> <laughs> he was tired and inebriated, so he didn't find humor in that. <laughs> like, it's like Simadonna. The, so back to today, the game. The the one thing is the rebounding stuff. And I dug through and I went through and you know, on the offensive glass, they Nebraska's been out rebounded by six point two a game in their ten losses. That's that's a lot. And they've been out rebounded by a total of eighty seven uh in their losses. So you got to like, they, they got to rebound. If they, if they get out rebounded, they're losing. Um, I think everybody knows that. I don't think that's like, you know, uh, breaking news or anything. So I, I, I think that's a, a huge key. Now they're averaging 77.6 points a game. Nebraska is. So if they can get it to the high seventies, they're, they're, they're going to win. I, I just don't see it. If, if it gets, uh, if the winning team has less than, 72 I don't mm. I, there's no way Nebraska wins the game. Mm. Wait, say that again. Boss? If the winning team in this game has less than 72, mm. I don't I don't see Nebraska winning. Okay. Uh, uh note to self cuz I I I I don't even know what the total is or anything like that. I have no idea. I don't know. What is it? 147, 148? Uh, I can check real quick. So well, it's it's the, but wait though. It's Deceivingly low for these two teams. One forty three aver- and a half. Hey, that's low. that's low. Yeah, and so every, everybody's like, "Oh man, I love the over. I love the over." Even Brian Edwards yeah. loved the over, and I'm like, the metrics say they're scoring significantly more than that. I don't, and everybody's on the over. Like, I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, Vegas isn't I, always right, but it's just a weird number. They're just not in the habit of. Of freebies yeah they're not they're not trying to lose money um so. were you disappointed in all the blowouts yesterday a little bit like i i, I wish you know just for selfishly i would have i would have liked to see south Dakota state play a little better maybe but boy they um, got so, we kind of called that though there's just yeah. suffocating there's nothing you're good like that matchup's just not that wasn't gonna work but i mean um, suffocating yeah and i'm also like immediately i wanted to be on a kentucky message board because i cannot imagine what kind of dumpster fire <laughs> is going on there mm-hmm. a lot of uh crowdfunding jokes about finding 33 million dollars oh wow yeah like do people realize um that guy is still pretty good at what he does i, we don't, were know. Actually, I don't know about that we were actually just having that conversation before you got on the air solder really huh I so I, I, I mean, what did, I, but did, wait a minute though. How can we talk about firing Tony Bennett, but we're cool with Cal? Yeah, you fire Tony Bennett. Who says that? That's dumb. Like, it, do you not have you not seen national media? Yeah, that's not 
that's crazy. Like the dude won a national championship at, at Virginia for Christ's sake. Like, like I, come on. And more recent than Cal did right. at Kentucky. But right, that we're we're def, we're rationalizing Cal, but we're we're mad at Bennett. Yeah, it's, he wants a significantly worse job. It's easier it's to significant. watch. That's the only reason. It's easier to watch. That's the reason. I'm not saying it's a good reason. It's easier to watch Kentucky lose a game when they score 90 points than it is to watch. I just hate the double standard. That's and I fine. Defend, and I defended Bennett because I think it's hard to do what he's doing in Charlottesville. That's totally I'm not. Fine. I'm not defending Cal. You ever been to Charlottesville? It's real yes. Hard. I, I, not, yes I not, easy, not easy to get to. I, yeah. I try to avoid places like that. Well, okay. remember I used to make the I, wine and brie cheese jokes for tailgating? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's Charlottesville. Yeah. Not well, that there's anything wrong with brie cheese or wine for that matter. I, I like I like a good wine and cheese. Sauter, will you have breakfast today that you paid for? Absolutely mm. not. There's no way. He's uh, in a There's no way. I have. Um, I, I have. How hard you go on the continental? I have. I, we don't have. There, that's not a thing here. I do have uh, breakfast bars that I packed because I figured that, that because there wasn't breakfast, so I, I packed with me breakfast. Wait, are you staying at a place that's too fancy to have continental breakfast? No, it ain't that fancy, let me tell you. But it is fine. They just don't have it, um, which is okay. I do not know what I'm going to eat today, but I do know one thing. I'm going to... You're not paying for it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Jer oh, damn apples. Jerome, you've got a long day to be disciplined, so I am wishing you the best because 5.50 is a long time from now. Long, I'm, long day. I'm going to go to the gym uh, now actually and just be there so right when i'm done with this i'm gonna go there and uh watch some games and then i'm gonna go to alfred's on beale street which is right right next to the fedex forum for the uh no block no rock uh podcast live and be there with those guys for two hours and yeah they're um, gonna be there from 12 to 2 local time right right yeah it is want to go hang out with them at hey, the God. same time godspeed all right solder have fun try to uh try to I mean, if you're hanging out with those guys, try to try to be sober by game time. That's all I'm asking. I'm not. I, I mean, I got to work. I can't do that. <laughs> hey, they're they're professionals. They know how to pull it off. Yeah, I, can, I, I can't do that. I got to be I got I, I, I would like to partake and enjoy with everyone else. I can't. I got to be. I'm just saying focused. they're going to try and talk you into it. Stay hey, North, North, Northwestern or FAU? Ooh, FAU. Really, mm. you, you don't sound real convicted about that. Yeah, I just think Ty Bear, like their injuries are ca gonna catch. Like at some point, the injuries are gonna catch them, right? Ty Berry's a pretty good player that they haven't played with now for a while, so they're getting used to it. But I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, who's getting the Louisville job? <sighs> Dusty wow. May. That's why I'm dressed up. I'm it's, interviewing today. It's got to be Dusty May. You think? But are you paying that guy two mil? Yeah, it's tough. Um, and the buyout stuff, it's mm. a little I'm gonna need I would need to see more. The one name that someone brought up yesterday was Will Wade, and I was like, there ain't no chance that they're doing that. Had had they have won, he'd have been a lot more marketable. Now you don't want the stink that comes with it and he, and he laid an egg. And because I think you're look I think at at universities are looking for reasons to to keep Will Wade out. Uh yeah. Well, wouldn't you? I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, listen, colleges have sold their soul. Speaking to, of guys, to, I'm not uh, totally sure level. are very good at uh, their job. Not totally sure. Yeah, he's man. He's a cheater. Woo, boy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Woo. All right. All right. Mr. Sauter, you look clean. Stay clean. Be good. Have fun at the gym today, bud. Yep. Bye. See you later. That's Mike Sauter joining us here on the uh, on. I'm not going to really make a case for Cal. And and, oh, I and, understand. and and hammer Tony Bennett. I'm not. I mean, I'll hammer them both because I think both of their results have been not what you would expect from guys that have won national titles. Is that fair? Like, if once a guy wins a national title, I expect a certain level of consistency after that. Yeah, but it was so, it was so jaw dropping, and you were like, I'm not sure Tony Bennett's a good coach. And they had five years of being pretty mediocre, right? They've had five bad years since the time. Yeah, well, Kentucky hasn't been to the second weekend in three consecutive years and haven't won anything since 12. That's fine. So I, what are we rationalizing? I'm not rationalizing Cal. I, I, think I meant as a... As a people, as yeah. a as an industry. <laughs> as a, as, 
my brother. Um, I don't think you can say that word, industry. Brother? What? Shut up, Shane. Uh, hey, by the way, you said FAU <laughs> and Northwestern. That that line, the that game right there, just from all the brackets that I've seen, which hasn't been very many, but that seemed to be right down the line. Yeah, it's I, an eight. It's an eight nine. That's why. I mean, like half the people are going. It's eight nine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, who do you guys got for that? Um, I'll take FAU. I will too. FAU. Okay. I'll take FAU. I yeah, I'll take FAU. I don't know. Who I, I think in my bracket. I but. think Tony Bennett and John Calipari are the opposite sides of the same coin. They are really, really good at part of their job, and the other part of the job leaves a lot to be desired. So you let Tony Bennett do the coaching and let Cal do the recruiting? Yeah, if they wanted to be on the same team, you'd be incredible. You'd never lose a game. But it's a lot that I really think the reason. Did you watch Kentucky shot selection? Yes. They don't. They're not coached. He just rolls it out. They play that way all the all time. the time and have for a very long time. He just... well, they just kind of started getting good at offense. Remember, like that was not his thing for a while. No, I mean the. They I mean Shepard and played... Dillingham and Reeves kind of. Yes. Help. But his offense is almost entirely personnel dependent. He's not drawn anything up. Dude, he, he had Anthony Davis and he was going for 10 a night. I understand that. Now, granted, Anthony Davis wasn't as polished offensively, but he was and very, very capable. There were a lot of other polished offensive players on that team. That's why they won that title yeah. as, and haven't won anything since. Yeah. He doesn't win anything that his personnel don't directly dictate, right? Whereas Tony Bennett has probably got, not probably, has definitely gotten more out of lesser players than John Calipari has. You don't think Cal could have coached Guy and Jerome? Probably not. No, probably not. DeAndre Hunter, maybe. Yeah. That fits his profile a little bit better. Diakite? No. I, I, I think the reason they're viewed differently nationally is because Kentucky's easier to watch. I really think that's it. I don't think it's entirely different cases. There's easier to watch. Mm. It's easier to stomach 90 points in a loss than 40. Did you see the all the YouTube and TikTok clips of the guy that had taken Oakland on the money line? No. I think, was it Jerry or Jeremy? I mean, this was he dude. just living and dying? Oh, man, this dude was Usain Bolting, like <laughs> the bow and arrows. He's like, dagger, baby. <laughs> I just was happy he was rolling with Adidas. I was like, yeah, maybe he's a Nebraska guy. That, uh, that, that corner three by, was it Cole? Oh, stone cold. In icy. Unbelievable. Icy. There's, whenever there's an upset like that, there's usually. And hand in the face, too. There's, yeah, that was a hard closeout. Yeah. And didn't even, didn't blink. Usually when there's an upset like that, there's a shot that you can point to and go, ah, yeah, that's one of those. Does 11 seem like it's low for an amount of three-pointers in one game for for the tournament? I mean, that, that In one a, game? Yeah. No. I'm not surprised that it's 11. I'm surprised that it was in 1990. Like, like I know Loyal Marymount was doing a different thing. But, 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 but you realize, like, just do the math. Like, 11 times 3 is 33. How many times do you see 33-point performances in college? Not a ton. Not also, a ton. it's you, you know what I mean? one every three and a half minutes if you play the entire game. <laughs> That's a pretty good clip. He was shooting that thing, too. What do you have, eight two-point field goal attempts? The entire season. Yeah. I bet at least half of them were toe on the line. <laughs> not even – not didn't even mean to. <laughs> at least half of them. Uh, coming up next, we got Volke. Coming up next, we got Jessica Cootie here on Herd Sports Radio. We're back here on Herd Sports Radio, AM 590, ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, KFOR in Lincoln. That's DB. I'm Ravi Lula. We're brought to you by the Team Jack Foundation. Go to teamjackfoundation.org to get involved with their fight to find better treatments for kids fighting brain cancer and one day a cure. They've raised over $12 million to date to support projects with Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Memorial Slogan Kettering, Columbia University, and of course, the University of Nebraska Medical Center. You can find upcoming events, or you can just donate directly online at teamjackfoundation.org. Joining us now is Jessica Cootie of the Husker Radio Network. Jessica, how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm great. How are you guys doing? JC, what's up? Everybody told me to chill out, so I'm, I'm chilling out. I, I, yeah, I sounds had, like I, you guys need some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's... Oh, that took you all of 15 seconds. Well is, done. There is like a couple's counseling element to what we do here. So 
Maybe that's mm-hmm. not a terrible idea. I, I was, I was, I was being accused of gatekeeping. It wasn't even nah, JC. Bit. Like nah, she bit. knows me. Like it's not even about who. It's the what. It's not. It's not anti case I just don't want the product lesson because as we just heard Coach Hoiberg talk, I mean these these guys are pretty dialed in and they are all business, right? I mean, is that the feel you get? You're right there with them. Yeah, and they have been all season, and and that was one thing I, I found interesting. It was right before the Big Ten tournament, and things had started to come together for this team. And Coach Hoiberg was on his hour long radio show with us, and he had mentioned that Coach Cook actually reached out to him and said, "You know, it is. It's 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 you you got to approach it like business like, but you also got to find ways to enjoy it." And so I think that's even been the message put to this team is not even so much like hey we got to be business like it's hey maybe let's let's take a step back and not even and and enjoy the ride a little bit but they they absolutely have but what's great about this team is it is it's because they're a a great storyline going into this and i talked to john rothstein yesterday who's going to be on the call today on tnt and and he said that it's one of the better story is well it's one of the better storylines in the in the whole tournament this year so they they've caught they've got a lot of attention and while the outside world is making it about Casey Tomonaga and he's getting a lot of love these guys in that locker room they don't care they're okay with it you know because they understand what the team is and so it's not like I mean we're, we're sitting here fighting a battle for them that they don't even care to be fought for them you know it's like they're okay with Kase getting the superstardom treatment because they they are okay and love the kind of culture and locker room that they have and they they know who they are and they embrace it. Yeah, it's interesting because I said even you know I'm I'm willing to to be the old man in the group, but I always just approach it like from a team aspect, and you know, kind of my personality in terms of like just being dialed in when it, it's time to do work. How cool is it that they don't care, right? Like a Bryce Williams can score 23 points, have five of eight field goals. Another guy's getting storylines or a rink mass can lead the team in assists like Sauter was just talking about. And that's not talked about. Do you think that's part of the secret sauce that people miss all the little different parts? Absolutely. And it would be interesting. I tracked this for a while in the beginning of the season, but I think when they started the season in six different games and the six games to start the season, they had six different leading scores. And you could probably go back and, and look at that for every game this season. And it's, it's, it's really crazy how many times it's a different leading score. It could be Bryce Williams. It could be Rink Mass. It could be Jawan Gary. It could be Casey Tomanaga. It could be CJ, CJ Wilcher. You could go down the list. And so, and this team embraces that. And that goes back to the guys that they brought in. They started this culture and, and the buying in and they, it started last year. And then when they went to the portal, they got guys that believed in that. And Rink Mass believes in that. Bryce Williams believes in that. And so, they are a thousand percent. I mean, a lot of guys can say that, oh, we 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 don't care if we get the points tonight, but ultimately they really do. I, I also mentioned forgot to mention Jamarcus Lawrence. I mean, again, you could that's really my go ex, down. That's, that's my expert. You know, so so it's like you you have so many different guys that could be the guy, and they find the guy, each whatever, whoever has the hot hand, and that's what Coach Hoiberg has said over and over again is that he loves about this team, is they realize very quickly in a game who's got the hot hand and even in a half who's got the hot hand and they get them the ball and they don't care that they're not getting theirs. It is about Mm -hmm. winning basketball games. And that is ultimately, and it sounds like, Oh, everybody says that, but that is to the core to the, to this team and why they are where they are. Jessica, how, how much easier do you think it's been to find the right fit for in the transfer market? Because we we saw Coach Hoiberg the first few years where it wasn't working out the way we wanted it to, where the transfers maybe weren't hitting the same. And once they found that identity of who they are, it seems like all of a sudden those transfers hit at a super high rate. I mean, co- coincidence or correlation there? Well, look, there's no doubt. Fred Hoiberg is a proven coach. I mean, I was at Oklahoma for several years when he was at Iowa State, and his teams were unbelievable. He puts guys in the league. He's been in the league. He knows. And so players know that he can develop 
NBA talent, his system translates well to the NBA. So that's, that's a big part of it. But then it was like, yeah, we got to find the guys that fit this culture. And I think it's the, this team this year reminds me a lot of the team that he took to the sweet 16 with George Niang and that group, because they had a lot of, they had a lot of guys like this too, that could score it. And that they just, when they were all clicking, they were just such a deadly group. And so, um, yeah, I, I think it was, figuring it out and you have to remember there was a COVID year and he was coming back from the NBA things had changed a little bit and so just figuring out how to work and what works here at Nebraska and and I think his coaching staff is unbelievable they are so great you know I was just watching practice yesterday and the way that they work together it's seamless when certain guys are hey this is the inbounds plays we're working on and then hey this is the when they're pressing what we're going to do and they just they flow in and out and they're so supportive of one another it's just it's from top down the culture and yes I think it it maybe took a minute to figure that out but I think he's got the he's got the recipe right now JC whose personalities is this team right? You have the the unassuming approach of Bryce. You got the fun loving Kase. You got the toughness of Jawan. Like when you're looking at this team's temperament, but what do you see the most? Like whether it's on their travel or whose personalities do you kind of see? Like oh okay, who who commands the huddle? Well, I think it it depends on the game, and if it's a <laughs> you know if it's a grind it out type of game where the shots aren't falling they got to lock down defensively it's Jawan gary and sam hoiberg's team if it's a hey we gotta you know sometimes it's casey's team when he's unbelievable unconscious it's um you know and, and i think you start to see the team really lighten up too but i'll never forget adam howard when he was on the show back i think it was december or november he said that rink mast is one of the best leaders he's ever been around in a college basketball locker room mm. and so i think from the start when he got here he he made his mark on this team and he um and it's also um an example with how he sets in practice and the tone that he sets in practice and and just uh, the belief in a team that hey no we're going to win basketball games we're going to figure out a way to win these basketball games so but i think it's it's a collective effort and you know i think it maybe took a little while to develop the conversation in the huddles but Coach Hoiberg has said a couple different wins that when they've sustained the runs, like at Indiana, it was Jerron Coleman that was was a vocal guy in in the huddle. It's it's the, when the team takes on and takes responsibility on their own. That's when they've been able to work through some of the adversity. And I think that's a number of different guys that step up in different moments. And that's that's what makes great basketball teams. That's what makes special bas basketball teams. Do you feel Uncle KP's emotions? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle KP. I think today he's going to be really feeling it. Yesterday he seemed to just be taking it all in. Like he was on cloud nine and he's a celebrity here. I mean, oh, they, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I said this to Greg for as much as at the big 10 women's basketball championship, they were calling it Carver North. Yes. This is like PBA East. <laughs> there are so many Husker fans walking around, taking over Beale street and they were at the shoot arounds yesterday. And of course, Kent Pavelka is one of the number one selfies people want to take. And uh, <laughs> so he he's absolutely because he's, you know, such a recognizable guy and people want it for him. That's what I think is so cool, too, is that he's done this for so long. People want him to to have this experience where you you win a basketball game in the NCAA tournament. But uh, yeah, he's I think he'll be a little maybe a little little more stressed today. But I think the last couple of days he was kind of take, just taking it all in. Appreciate you. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Wrapping up the show here on a Friday, wrapping up the week on AM 590 ESPN Omaha, ESPN Tri-Cities, and KFOR in Lincoln. We're live on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. STB, I'm Ravi Lula. We're now joined by our guy, Matt Verzal. Verz, how are you this morning? Good, boys. How you doing? Uh-oh. Uh, the better question is, how are you doing? I'm always good, Damon. That, 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 I call my friends because they watch a lot of college basketball just to get some insight. They don't call me back. So I bet their team in the hopes now that they lose. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a very specific scenario there. Yeah. I, doesn't sound that much like a hypothetical there, Matty. Yeah. I, mean, I don't expect, I would ask a lot out of my friends just to call back. I'm driving over to Iowa to make bets. 
Yeah. Thirty seconds of your time. Well, it you. I thought you had a. I thought you had a a beggar beggar a better story to tell so i figured i'd need to a lot more time well you were close there you almost said a bad word i know you bring it out in <laughs> yeah that was, whoa, got a little nervous there <laughs> I was like, ah, i'm just gonna hang up now <laughs> yes that's what shane was thinking too hey do the you message have was very, the message was very clear yours yeah well i read i read the text after though the voice to text no, you texted and you said you had a story. That's why. That's what I thought. Yeah, that was a different phone call. Oh, well. Sorry. They're two separate entities. Sorry. I haven't told you the one. Just text me. You didn't even do that. Wow. Are you, okay. I see where I see where I rank. That's fine. I I, I do have some I situational do have, friend. I get it. I do have some questions. <laughs> wow. You better stop. <laughs> hey, by the way, are you the <laughs> Are you the only one that has that feelings t-shirt or was that online? The what? The, the blank your feelings t-shirt. Oh, no, no, no. Those are out there. Yeah. So, so it, are you, oh, so it, that's available for purchase. I, I thought those were one, part of the ones you were designing too. I, I mean, I'll probably put one on there in a little bit here. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to teach myself. I'm trying to teach that. You want to see where it's on funny. I'm trying to teach myself like, illustrator and uh and photoshop so i can just when i get an idea i can send it i, I can put some stuff down and send it to my guy and say help me fix this <laughs> wow. wow oh yeah I'm on, some, I'm on some tutorials i bought some tutorials it is i you've never seen a computer about get thrown through a wall more than than i should probably tape it but you, you, that computer's been in the air a few times getting ready to get hucked into the wall you're super publicly accessible at your job when you're out and about yeah. with the customers. Did you, was it hard for you to manage your personal feelings versus whatever else was going on with regards to, to Nebraska and the athletic director, former athletic director? No, no, I let it rip. Especially now that, that, that Trev has moved on. We're really letting it rip now. There's, there's been some eye popping conversations to some folks. Yeah, I bet. They're just like, they're just like whoa, you're lying. I'm like, oh, no, no. I, 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 there's a couple things I don't do. I'm lying, ain't one of them. I'll tell you the truth. So, did you have, so did people ask you why you were so upset last Friday or did they get it? No, they got it. Well, this is one of the one things I was going to tell you and I'll just say it. I had employees from the University of Nebraska Lincoln different offices down there drove from Lincoln to Omaha to have dinner. Wow. Four, I, I ended up being four separate people that came down and you know, they're like, it's, it's always kind of awkward. It's like, are you verse? And I was like, yeah, yep. <laughs> I just are are, you, the, are you the guy that just had the meltdown? On, on no, nope. they're like, this is going to go one of two ways right now. You're going to be real good or real bad. And to a person, they're all like, hey, thank you. Like, you you only scratch the surface. You you have no idea what it's like up there, and that was disheartening, of course. But it um, you know we had a great conversation, and I said you know however you think I can help, I'll do whatever I can. And they're like just you know know that you're you're on the right path. <laughs> I was like okay, wow. I don't know what that means. So I might not be able to attend our thirtieth anniversary for the, for the ninety four <laughs> national championship team. I might get the boot. Hey, are they, are they, are they doing that? Um, if they don't, we're going to have a big problem. We're going to have a bigger problem than some of the other problems. Do people normally celebrate thirties? I think you do the 10 year intervals. Do you? I don't know. I see. I think we're getting screwed. We should go five. (laughs) (laughs) I like, I I can can see the collective eye rolls around the city. Oh, there they go. He's living in the past. (laughs) I no, you, I don't. You, I don't you make it about, seem like I'm used. Like uh, I don't know, Matt. Have I, I have it, I done I the thirty give, year thing before? This would be my first time. So how do I know I what people normally do? Negative infinity f's <laughs> that people think. Oh, here they go. Because it's as selfish as I can be with it. Because I love seeing my buddies from college, and if that's the reason they can all come back to Lincoln and we can all get together, it sign me up. They can do every. They can do annual if they want. 
because you got to admit, me and you had a good time until that late, that little girl that got us off the field told us to get the F off of their field. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Damon and I look at each other. I'm like, what did you just say? And she goes, <laughs> this little gal goes, get the F, the college girl. Like, we're getting screamed at by a college girl. She goes, get the F off of our field. And I was like, okay. All right. I looked at Damon. He looked at me. I was like, we're out of here. We're blowing this possible stance. I'm like, we're going out to the tailgate. We're going to keep drinking. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. Uh, that was when I met Jenny for the first time. Yeah. I remember. I, I think I, 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 I put my lips on an ice trough, and I was traumatized. You did. I was forty-seven sheets to the wind in in your in my phone for the longest time. JC's name was Damon's girl. Because <laughs> <laughs> you told me her name and I couldn't remember it for the life of me. Yeah. Now, now you guys like each other a lot more than either one of you likes me. That's cool. I see how that works. Yeah, that's just evolution. Like the cards are gonna fall where the cards fall. All right, Verz. I gotta ask the question, and I. You know, if you don't feel like answering, I, I totally understand. But when you got people telling you how disheartening it is, is there any details you can share there? No. Okay. I had to ask. Well, so is that one of those where you didn't want to be validated? You'd rather have been not right, but you were, and it made you even more mad? No, because then it gets my – I knew I was right, or I wouldn't have said it, mm. okay? But having them – like, listen, I love Faisons. I love the people who come in. We're not a destination spot in Omaha. <laughs> like, wow. We are not a bougie steakhouse. We are not at overpriced, you know, all that stuff. That, that's, that's a Tuesday trip. That's not, that's not a Friday night trip. But it's, um, I really value them. And, and then, it, and then I, I, like, I like to fix things. Okay. I like to help. So if things are bad, Damon can vouch for this. If, you know, I've, I've played taxi for the betting boys happily. Yeah. Taxied them even when their grandma walked out of the garage the oh, same time and oh just Lord. drove away. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Um, but I will always I will always help. And I love the university. I, I had such an awesome experience at Nebraska, and it got me so many of my great friends, and it opened my, my little brain to so much stuff that I want the kids that are there to have the same experience. I want them to, to have the same passion and love and all that stuff for the school and, and to have, again, the people that are in charge to be in the way. And I, and, and thank you to Bill Byrne and, and the rest. Of, I don't know which chancellors we had. I know. See, that's how little I knew. I didn't need to know the chancellor's name. I couldn't even tell you who the president was, but I knew who Bill Byrne was. And yeah. he was making sure that our experience was as good as it could be. Hmm. And that's, that's all those kids need. They don't need, your dumb ass is doing egotistical crap. They're there to play football and, and get an education, that too. But it's just like, get out of the way. Like, nerd, go away. Go do nerd stuff somewhere else. Just let us bash our heads into each other. We know what we sign up for. Leave us alone. Every day, every week, I do these interviews in fear. <laughs> wow. Just nobody's safe, are they, Maddie? No, no, I don't forget either. I was so mad. I was so mad that day. I was fighting. I like. I wanted. I was mad. Hey, but we did. We did tell each other we were number one, though. Me and her. Wow. <laughs> she didn't like that I wouldn't move my car, and I didn't. And she told me I was number one, and my my number one indicator is very large. And so I fired that baby back at her. All, all right, all right. You might even have got the double. <laughs> any, any deliveries? Yeah, remember, I might have blacked out there for a little bit. <laughs> any, any, any deliveries, Maddie? We got lunches. Where it's going to be? A, it's going to be an ass show today. I'll just tell you. We got Scott lunch, but we're going to open the dining room just because it's basketball stuff, and so. Mm. Katie's going to have her hands full. She got to warn everybody. It's going to take a little bit longer than normal, but we'll get it all done. We'll uh -huh. figure it out. Poor girl. I give her my best. All right, Maddie. Nah, she's a, she's an Ellis and a Grand Island girl. She's fine. <laughs> Got that 308. Yeah. I, I, Hard I, in Chinese algebra, boys. I, I never felt like we were any less friends. Good talk, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Now I got North Carolina to win it all, so I hope they get bounced today. <laughs> That's Matt Verzal, the one and only. 
Uh, we appreciate you, Furs. We'll talk to you next week. Oh, See you, boys. Oh, God. That's the show for the week. I don't even recognize what we're doing here. I have here. no idea. It was quite a week. Uh, next week, if we don't get to Hubert Davis, Dr. Nick is going to kill us both. So we got to get well, to it. Well, we still hope they beat Sparty. We're UNC good. UNC needs to get a W this weekend so we can do it. That's DBM Rob Zula. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.